Peters. The crowds have been marvelous as always here at Rosenblatt Stadium, and we are expecting another attendance record for the series here in 1998. Eight teams have come to Omaha for this double elimination tournament. Yesterday's winners, Arizona State and Miami, are now paired in the winner's bracket, while FSU and Long Beach State will have to fight their way out of the loser's bracket. Earlier today, defending champion LSU put on an awesome display of power to knock off USC. The Tigers await the winner of this game while USC gets the loser. Good evening, everybody. Mike Patrick along with Harold Reynolds. It's great to have you with us. We always see our share of stars out here. Pat Burrell of Miami mm -hmm. last night and Santos, Eddie Furness of uh, LSU this afternoon. But Brad Wilkerson may be the best all-around player in the game of college baseball today. He already picked up one player of the year award this afternoon. He's a special breed. Anywhere a left-hander can play on the field, this young man can do it. Left field, center field, he's got great range. Right field, he's got a good arm, but he swings that bat also. And he is a tremendous athlete. we got a treat to watch him tonight. Luck against Florida. In fact, they have lost 16 of their last 17 games against the Gators since 1991. But two of the three were one-run affairs to say, uh, this year. The advantage that Mississippi State would seem to have coming into this in a tournament format is that very deep pitching stand. Well, unlike most of the teams in the SEC who build their teams around power, they built their program around pitching. They're going with the guy tonight in Ginter, who's got a great strong fastball, and then they can back it up with Jackson. And right. even though they lost Du Bois, the number one pick last year to the Oakland A's. They're deep, and it may be a factor before we are done. There is Jeremy Jackson. He will start the next game for the Bulldogs. It's Mississippi State looking to up and the number one seed Florida Gators as the College World Series continues. Field. Brad Freeman is the shortstop. He'll hit third. The cleanup man, Richard Lee, is the first baseman. Brooks Bryan is the number five hitter. He'll play center field. The third baseman hitting sixth is Travis Chapman. Harry Patton will hit seventh and catch tonight. The DH is John Knott. He's in the number eight slot. And Chris Lauterhaas, the second baseman, will bat ninth. You just need to look to that three spot right there and Freeman, the shortstop. He's a tremendous athlete. He can go ahead and do a lot of things for you, but he is the leader on this team. The best athlete hitting third, and that's what you want out of a ball club. Brad Wilkerson on the hill for the Gators. 10 and 4 on the year. This will be his 19th game, his 19th start of the season. He has completed one, has an earned run average of 4.45, which tells you he may not be an overpowering pitcher, but he hangs. Weiss takes a called strike. He's hitting 424. Not your typical leadoff hitter. He has power. They started him as the DH. He was number five in the order, but uh, through a series of circumstances, they have moved him up to number one. And when you think about it, in some ways, it makes a lot of sense. You got a 424 hitter. You want him up there as many times as you can. On base percentage. And the thing that he likes to do is ignite a ball club right away. He will lead you off with a home run. and. Nothing better to help you relax in the World Series and get a leadoff homer. Outside with a fastball, two and one. He is going to be their first 400 hitter since Will Clark played in Starkville. It's not bad company. No, it's not. Only the eighth in the history of the program, in fact. Smoked in the gap in left center field. Smith comes up with it, and they'll hold him to a single. He got a 2-1 fastball there, Mike, and they've been painting him away, painting him away. He's scoot a little bit closer to the plate and just gets a pitch right on the outside half and pulls it. So actually, that ball's outside, but he got himself in a position knowing that a fastball is coming. He's going to be able to get the bat head out and get the base hit. Mississippi State will run a little more than most of the clubs here who are, as uh, LSU puts it, playing guerrilla baseball. And boy, didn't they today. Oh, my goodness. King Kong baseball. Yeah, Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> Any of those will work. And they'll hit and run with this kid, Rusty Toms, who comes in hitting 311. Weiss down at first has 10 steals and 13 tries. Popped off the right side. Nicholson gives chase and can't get there and hit the wall pretty hard. Nice effort, but he, he braced himself with that slide. A lot of times you'll see a guy slide into the wall to stop himself from having to go full speed into the wall. Watch him break into the slide and goes ahead and puts the foot up to brace himself. That's one of the best ways to stop and continue to be safe out there. 
And it actually gives you a shot at still making a play right against the wall without killing yourself. Mm -hmm. Nice aggressive play. One and one to Rusty Toms. We're in the top of the first. This one's hit in the air to right. Nicholson drifting back. He'll make the catch. We've already seen Nicholson, the right fielder, in action. Here's the rest of the defense. The outfield left to right. Smith, Catalanote, and Nicholson in the outfield. The infield, Siegel at third. Ellis at second. Ty, or at short, Ty Martin at second. Jason Dill at first with Wilkerson on the hill. And David Ross, the transfer from Auburn, who's really solidified this defense behind the plate. One out, one on for Brad Freeman. Ross calls his own game as opposed to the practice of a lot of head coaches who want uh, that control. Well, these two teams, Mike, are really familiar with each other. And watching Wilkerson, the first uh, two hitters, and right there, the first pitch here, everything is outside. Pounding away, pounding away, pounding away. And after you witness that game, the first game today, I think I might be pitching a little bit outside also. As far as possible. Freeman, a 362 hitter with 11 homers. Nubs that one foul. When you play Andy Lopez and the Florida Gators, you had better get some runs because they will. Lopez has almost completely changed his philosophy since he won a championship at Pepperdine. Wilkerson's first throw over, just a little. Nothing move, but a 1-1 count. You want to see kind of what that runner at first base might be anticipating doing. See a little better read. Check swing, high ball two. Freeman, or Weiss doesn't have a really outstanding lead down at first. No, he, doesn't, he hasn't taken a big lead. I've been watching him. The first time he stood a little bit upright, and I was like, ah, he's not going to run. Then he started to bend down, get a little more athletic position. 2-1 pitch here with Freeman who handles the bat. We might see a little movement. Off the fists and back foul. If you look at Freeman's approach on that ball, he was looking for something out, and he ended up diving in and, and jammed himself on a pitch that was a pretty, a pretty good hitter's pitch, actually. Now watch his stride. He goes ahead. He's looking to go outside with that pitch, and it cuts back in on his hands. So a little cat and mouse going on. Freeman was drafted out of high school, drafted again last year, pretty high draft pick both times, did not sign, chose to come back to school. Was very close to signing the paperwork. Inside the runner goes, the throw to second and the stolen base for Brian Weiss. Weiss got an excellent jump there, Mike, and you know, he got a chance to read Wilkins. Wilkins only threw over there one time, so I think he might have went on first movement. And what you do on first movement, as soon as you see the first thing that he does move, he takes off. And he's off and going. He looks in, actually, to see if this, I don't think it was a hit and run with two strikes, but he takes a peek. That's a guy who doesn't steal a whole lot, taking yeah. a peek in right there. But he stole it easily, a runner in scoring position, three and two to Freeman. Fouled back off the right side into the stands. Freeman's an interesting story you were talking about. He's been drafted a couple times, actually even had the contract in hand. Yeah. And uh, you can elaborate on that a little bit more. It's it's got to be a very emotional thing for a kid who just has the feeling that it's not right for him to do it right now and he wants to come back for a senior year in school. He knows he's going to be drafted again. Ball strike three. Well, interesting pitch sequence right there. Wilkerson started away, 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 busted him back in on the 2-1 pitch when he had Freeman looking outside. Here's the sequence now. He starts out with the fastball outside. Comes back with a breaking ball on the outside half. Right there goes up and in. Now here's that 2-1 pitch. Jammed him. And then got him looking outside. Gets a foul ball away. And now here he is. He's got him looking outside again. Just frees him right down the middle. As you said, Wilkerson is a battler. If, if you don't have overpowering stuff, you've got to be smart. It's the only way you can stay in there. Exactly. And as, as projected, he was going to go in and out, in and out. And when you're able to use both sides of the plate, you become that much more effective to make the hitters have to look for more things to hit. Two outs and a runner at second for Richard Lee, who leads the club with 18 homers and 80 RBIs. 
it's tough enough to hit a guy who's throwing a fastball on the change up on the curve but when he starts putting it where he wants it that makes it even more difficult Lee with some big numbers Ooh. born and raised in Jackson Mississippi fastball outside He's got the nice and loose, relaxed hands, even in his, his pre preliminary swing. Just nice and easy. You can see where he generates a lot of that speed, probably in his hands. The 2 1 foul straight back at a good cut. Very nice swing. Owns a lot of the uh, Mississippi State school records for hitting. Broke uh, Will Clark, Rafael Palmero's record for just about everything the triple crown winner a year ago very difficult feat to accomplish and here's the home plate umpires mass camp on two and two inside jammed him again and pop back out of play now you'll always hear in college baseball with a big aluminum bat you can't pitch inside anymore but guys like Wilkerson find they have to pitch it. Well, and the thing, the way he's getting inside, Mike, is he's throwing this cutter. And a, a cut fastball, what that does is as we look at the mass cam, it looks like a regular fastball. Then as you saw the, the approach of the hitter leave there, he had to pull his hands back in at the last second. You don't get a read. You don't see that dot that you see with the slider. And so your mind registers you have to pull it bat inside. With the cutter, it cuts at the last second in on your hands, and you almost have to have a reaction type of swing. Set up outside this time and painted the corner with a fastball called strike three. Two in the inning, a single and an error, but no run scored. So Wilkerson works his way out of a jam, and at the end of a half an inning, it is nothing, nothing with the top seeded Gators coming to bat. This is our opportunity to check in with Dave Ryan. Dave, how you doing? Mike, great down here, a little bit hot, unfortunately. But last night, several of the Gator players were here at Rosenblatt Stadium, but it wasn't just to scout out what could be future opponents. The head coach, Andy Lopez, urged the team to come out to Rosenblatt to get a feel for the experience, the big-time atmosphere, all the crowd, kind of like a major league game for them. Because several of the players, more than 12, in fact, of the Gators have never experienced big-time game, big game like this in the College World Series before. Now, we asked starting pitcher Brad Wilkerson last night about being here, getting a feel for it all. He said, it's great to take the entire event in, because the last thing you want to do in college baseball's most spectacular event is be surprised when the game starts, Mike. All right, Dave, thanks very much. Uh, beautiful night for baseball. You're right, it is a little warm, uh, especially down there where you are. At least we have a fan. Let's take a look at the Florida Gators starting lineup under Andy Lopez. Mark Ellis will lead off and play shortstop. The third baseman hitting second is Matt Siegel. Brad Wilkerson, you've already seen him pitch, will hit third. Casey Smith, the left fielder, is the cleanup man. Center fielder Greg Catalanate will hit fifth. Derek Nicholson, number six in the order, he's the right fielder. The catcher and hitting seventh is David Ross. First baseman Jason Dill will hit eighth and batting ninth and playing second base is Ty Martin. The key guy in this lineup is Casey Casey Smith because they're going to pitch around Wilkerson a lot. And I talked with him earlier about that. I said, well, what do you feel like when they pitch around him? He said, I love it. I love it. Gives me an opportunity to go ahead and show people what I can do, and I want to beat them. Make them pay. Yes, indeed. And he can do it. He's hitting 484 with runners in scoring position, so somebody has been paying. Matt Ginter will start for Mississippi State. He is 5-4 and four on the year with a 5.06 ERA. He's pitched 83 and two-thirds innings, given up 47 earned runs, struck out 98, which leads the staff. Well, you, what you're going to see from Ginter, he's a sophomore that's been drafted by the Yankees before, but he's got an 89 and 90 mile an hour fastball with good movement and a slider, and he's going to use this slider if he gets in trouble as an adjustment pitch. First one is in high to Ellis, and Ginter will have to be at his best. The Florida Gators are averaging nearly 10 runs a ball game and have scored 10 or more 26 times. Third. Take a look at the rest of the defense as Chapman has already shown you some leather down at third with virtually no reaction time. Freeman at short. 
Lauder Haas, the second baseman, Lee and Brian Weiss in right field. What a play by Chapman down there. He was playing him in so close, and for looking for that bunt, just the reaction on that ball is really nice. Called strike on the corner. Don't have a whole lot of time with these aluminum bats if you react, and I don't know if I'm creeping in there like he was. <laughs> no, I'm playing on the outfield grass. That one's fouled off of Siegel's leg. Matt hitting 357 coming. Just watch the reaction on this thing. Well, look at how close he is. He's, he's coming in anticipating the bunt, but takes away the base hit. That's just pure reaction down there. To be able to get up and jump like that, that shows a little bit of athletic ability that he's got. He's still smiling. Oh, yeah. They're going to have to slap that one off his <laughs> face. I mean, he's he ought to be proud of that. That was a great play. Siegel takes call strike three. And I don't know what he was looking for, but it wasn't that one. Well, the interesting thing, Mike, the 0-2 pitch set up that pitch right there. He busted him in with a fastball 0-2, and he, uh, he's looking inside. It just froze him with the pitch away. When somebody's pounding you in, 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 on an 0-2 pitch, you're looking at either getting hit or trying to get out of the way. And right there, he just went ahead and said, well, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate him. Three strikeouts so far in the ballgame combined all have been called by the home plate umpire, Wade Ford. That one just missed, low and inside to Wilkerson. And Wilkerson does not get a lot of good pitches to hit. Even though he's had guys hitting around him really well, they don't like to pitch to him. Some guys just step in the box, Mike, and they just look like a hitter. He just looks hitterish. He took the first pitch, and he eyeballed that one. He's, he's already on everything. He's seen two pitches. One and one to Wilkerson. Nobody on with two out. And a 57-foot curveball. Well, you already see the respect that he commands, and they've started changing their pattern already. He's seen every pitch that he has now. He's seen the fastball, he saw the slider, and right there he saw a little curveball that bounced. And that curveball's not even supposed to be part of his, his package. That's right. <laughs> Wilkerson, the first three-time All-American in Florida baseball history. Hits it high in the air to straight left center. Now drifting toward further toward left center. Brooks Bryan makes the catch. Three up, three down. The Gators go quietly in the first at the end of one at the College World Series. We are scoreless. So and they're having a little fun out there in left field. Sun getting ready to go down. It's sort of been a hazy day here in Omaha yesterday. Beautiful sunshine. It's supposed to have a front come through tonight, and it'll be uh, about 75 as opposed to 90 tomorrow. Lifted in the air to deep left. Casey Smith going back. He runs out of room. It's a home run on the first pitch for Brooks Bryant. Well, he's been awful hot, Mike. He's now 13 of his last 23, and that bomb gets him started in the right direction. He got a fastball out in the way and just drove it. Now, these guys are familiar with each other. They faced each other during the league, so he knew exactly how they were going to go after him. This is no doubt that he's looking to hit this ball left field, and he just got a fastball and charged it. The ninth home run of the year for Brooks Bryant. And Mississippi State breaks on top 1-0. This is Travis Chapman, who was at 10 himself this year. Brian from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Tap foul, 1-1. One and one. You notice they didn't celebrate too much. One against the Gators isn't much. Well, it's not much, but it's a nice little start. Yes, though. it is. After this afternoon's game, I saw that. I don't know if 10 is enough. It was a launching pad this afternoon. LSU just put on a remarkable display of home run power. Oh! Two one inside, three and one to Chapman. Now that's the, the fourth time he's thrown that two one cutter. We'll have to keep an eye on that. That time he missed down and in. Tap foul again, three and two. So it looks like to me when a hitter gets him in a hitter's count where he's looking for a fastball, he's not going with that straight four-seam fastball. He's throwing a little cutter. And that, what I mean by that, 
also is a lot of people talk about four seam, two seam, but they never explain what the heck they're talking about. A four seam fastball is the ball that rotates head over head. Just missed inside a walk to Chapman. Whereas the two seamer has some movement on it, some uh, lateral movement yeah. or down. Exactly. You grip the two seams on the ball and you, you use it to cut the ball whichever way you want. You want a four seam, that's more what the middle infielder and outfielder would throw, so you get a little carry to it. And uh, so for you listeners out there, that's that's what they're talking about when they're talking about a four seam or a two seam. Barry Patton stands in, a 295 hitter, the catcher with Chapman down at first, nobody out. And Wilkerson misses badly, and David Ross is going to come out. Base, outfield, that gives you carry, and that's what a pitcher will get when he's throwing 90 91. And there's his four seam fastball again. You can see the grip he had even there. That's when you want the ball to go straight. You don't want any tail, you don't want any movement, you're going to hit a spot. Missed again. He does not have the greatest control. Having walked 64 and 119 in the third coming in. And he falls behind 3 and 0 to the number six hitter, Travis Chapman. Well, he's a hitter. Or, uh, Patton, excuse me. Yeah, was on first. Wilkerson's a hitter by nature, also. Now, he understands how much this ball jumps in this ballpark. It looks like he's starting to move the ball out, away, away, away. High with a 3 1. Gives up his second consecutive base on balls. And he's putting himself in a very difficult situation. Yes, but the, the one thing that Mr. Lopez understands is, is this man has got a heart. And I'm sure that's what they're going to discuss right now, how they're going to go about it. <laughs> he gets into one. Let him in home runs most of the year, finished with 13 as he tailed off in the power department at the end of the season. See what Pat McMahon chooses to do. No sign of a bunt there and a called strike on a fastball. Well, a lot of times you give a guy one pitch to go ahead and swing the bat, and then you decide, okay, we're going to put on the bunt. We'll see how they play it now, and he's got an 0-1 count. And he's been struggling a little bit of late. They, they did say earlier, though, he carried them up until about mid-season of the season. Yes, he did. He had a great streak. Tried to jam him and missed inside one and one. After a leadoff home run from Brian Chapman and Patton have drawn consecutive walks, still nobody out here in the Mississippi State second inning. Mm -hmm. Had a good cut and fouled it back. One and two. A lot of shirt freshman out of Venice, Florida. A lot of people sitting out there might be saying, why do you not bunt first and second? No outs, but one run, two runs, three runs is not going to hold you in this ballpark. And when you got a chance to break an inning open early, I think you got to go ahead and shoot for it. I guarantee if he's up four, he might bunt here to try to get the fifth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Check swing, little roller to third. Siegel charges, throws on the run, and got him. The runners advance to second and third, so it works out just as well as a sacrifice. Really did. Siegel made a nice play charging in on this ball, but moved the runners up. Now watch Siegel come in. Anytime you got a ball rolling, see the hop right there? He knows the speed of his runner. Having played against these guys, he understands that. He also read the, that he got jammed, so he's able to go ahead and use the glove, field it, and make the throw. Anytime you get a rolling ball, you want to use your glove and not barehand it. Unless you're Omar of the scale, then you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> but most of us out there, you, you need to use that glove. Chris Lauterhaus comes up with one out and two men on. They're back at second, short, and first. They'll give up the run, and he does his job. Pounds it to second base to get the run across as Chapman scores easily from third, and it's 2-0. Well, that is a great piece of hitting that doesn't show up in the box scores very often. He got a reward with an RBI out of that, but he went up there with the intent of hit the ball on the ground up the middle anywhere to the right side. Got the job done, got the run in. Back to the top of the order to Brian Weiss, who singled to start the ball game and stole second base. Weiss's average just continues to climb as he came in at 424. Hit 429 in the Central Regional, had three doubles and a home run. 
Needs only one more base hit to break the Mississippi State single season record for hits. Wilkerson outside with a fastball. 2-0. Oh. Oh. Weiss just keeps inching closer and closer to Peyton. Wilkerson just keeps going further and further outside. Missed again, 3-0. and oh. Wilkerson has already walked two in the inning. And one of them has scored. Now look at how close he is right in here. He keeps moving further and further to the plate. He reached outside and got the base hit pitch right there, the ball four. The third walk in the inning. And when you get a guy that continues to pound away, 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 you're in the dugout, you're going back, you're talking about how a guy is approaching you, and they've faced him before this season, so you're already moving up on the plate. Runners at first and third for Rusty Toms with two out. Mississippi State only with two base hits, but one of them a home run, and sandwiched around three walks. Wilkerson battling to get out of the inning. Misses outside again. Now, the, the beauty, the beauty of it, of uh, the plate, the plate doesn't move. You know, most hitters, you, once you learn that, hey, I can move around in this thing, he's still got to throw the ball over the plate. So regardless of where he's throwing the ball, he's got to throw it over the plate. So you can keep moving to put yourself in a position to get a ball that you want to hit. That's why I think he's been so successful coming inside jamming these guys because they're moving so close to the plate you get a good whack at the outside. Pitch. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Hit to deep left. Smith going back. Forget it. Rusty Toms with only his third home run of the year. And it's 5 nothing Bulldogs. So even the little guys are getting in on the power act. Well, when you're not throwing strikes and you get behind and you have to throw pitches that the hitters can hit, you get hurt. And that's what's happened with Mr. Wilkerson. He's just been behind the hitters and having to lay it in there and let them swing. They're picking up their pitch. And all three guys that walked have scored here in the inning. Smoke toward the hole. Diving stop by Elsie. Won't be able to make a throw. And it's a base hit for Brad Freeman. He just got a pitch right down the middle and then hammered it. Man, that little ping, you can tell. It was <laughs> get that nice ping not necessarily that wooden sound but he, he had a good ping on there yes he did third home run of the year comes in the college world series Richard Lee is the ninth man to bat this inning struck out in the first See if they do something with Freeman at first. He is 16 for 16 in the stolen base department. Five nothing Bulldogs. And it's not a bad time to run on a, on a pitcher. Even though he's left handed, he hasn't been able to pick up the plate. So you know he's not going to be worrying about the runner at first base. He's concentrating so hard on, on getting a strike. And the plate remains elusive. It's two and one get the call on that pitch three walks three hits including a home run in the inning came inside and missed three and one one, one of the one hit him oh it did hit him just nicked him as he lunged back out of the way so Lee is hit by a pitch and there are two runners aboard well, here's a cutter that just cuts back and just keeps going. I, I don't know how he even barely got out of the way as he did. That ball just kept coming after him. Nicked him right above the knee. Once again, as you can just kind of see it. I don't know if it got him or not. 
a lot of times what happens is the catchers have a string hanging off that glove, and you, you hear the nick of the string that goes into the glove, and, it, and the umpire thinks he hears a jersey being nipped. It's, it happens so quick, you've got to go on sound. See the multiple signs there with the runner at second. College baseball, they tip a lot of signs to the hitters. Here's Brooks Bryan, who led off the inning with a home run. Ben Grislavski in the Florida bullpen. Still only two out here in the second inning for Bryan. And Wilkerson really enduring a struggle right now. He sure is. He just hasn't got into a nice rhythm or a nice flow. It looks like the ball's cutting all over the place. He's tried to do too many things. He, he's gone outside, tried to come inside. He hasn't really able to establish anywhere on the plate he wants to throw the ball yet. Bases juiced with two outs, already five runs home. Strike call. Two and two to Brooks Bryant. In college baseball, this is the level where you learn to tip signs, and a lot of times, that's why you'll see the catcher go with multiple signs right here, the one, two, three, and, and a lot of different things that he's showing, is so that runner second base isn't able to pick up your signs and tip it to the hitter. Here's the 2-2, two -two, and instead they check the runner at second. You just get the sense that five runs is not going to be enough. One swing could make it nine, however. Chop towards second. Martin on the short hop. Nice play and throws him out. So they get out of the inning, but surrender five runs, three hits, three walks, and a hit batter included. Brooks Bryan started the inning with a home run, and Rusty Toms finished off the rally with a bomb. Keep in mind, this is a team that has set a school record for home runs with 127, 595 runs, averaging nearly 10 a game. So five doesn't scare them a whole lot, but anything more, they might start to sweat a little. Casey Smith will lead it off, 394 hitter, best on the ball club. Also has a lot of power, 11 home runs. Seven players on this club with 10 or more home runs. Well, the Gators really, how Casey Smith goes is how they go because Wilkerson is so good that a lot of teams have been pitching around him. This young man has a lot of the pressure and he came through. Takes a high fastball down the right field line. Long run for Weiss and it drops harmlessly foul. Saw that ball fall in right there. And a lot of times the outfielders in college baseball you have to play so deep because of the aluminum bat that you'll see a lot of balls fall in. Now I, I would I would play shallow because if the balls hit over your head it's pretty much going to go out of the ballpark. You want to play shallow and take away those little bloopers to keep away from a long empty. Up and in three and one. Kendrick's got some movement on that fastball up around 90 miles an hour. Another fastball fouled back over the roof. Well, he's not messing around either. He's coming right after you. Here's the fastball. Go ahead and hit it. And that's what you want a pitcher to do when you've got a situation you've got five runs up there already in the second inning. Go after the hitters. Casey Smith, the senior from Dallas, Texas, facing a 3-2 count. Fastball fouled out of play again down the right side. Gators trying to get something started here in the bottom of the second inning after Mississippi State threw a five spot at them in the top of the second. Lost them inside with a fastball. First walk. We'll see how that materializes. A lot of the walks, they hurt you. We the, saw that already. The three scored in the top of the inning. Greg Catalanote, the center fielder, stands in hitting 360. 
switch hitter. He's stronger from the left side. Has a thumb injury that is really hampering his swing. And if you've ever had one, you're just really afraid to let it rip because you know it might be the last time you get to do it. Yeah, he's got the thumb injury on the left the left hand. So the left hand is your top hand. And he can actually swing the bat a little bit better from the left side because of that right hand, you pull it through. When you're using the, the top hand, you can let it go and still be able to have some leverage. When he's hitting from the right side and he has to use that left hand to be the pull-through bat, that's when it hurts his thumb even more. The amazing thing to me is he doesn't wear batting gloves. <laughs> no tape or anything. He's a, he's a gamer. Guys always want to do something different, don't they? Mm-hmm. Fouled out of play on the 2-0 fastball. It's now 2-1. and one. Funny story, Mike. We were meeting all, all the kids the other day, all the players out here, and uh, I'm walking into their dugout, and I go, hey, I know you. And he looked at me and goes, yeah. I remember, and we start talking. I used to go to this batting cage in spring training in Arizona, Casey at the bat, and he used to be there hitting all the time. And that's where I remembered him from. He's from Glendale. Yes. Fastball missed inside at the knees, 3-1. and one. So Smith walks to open the inning, and Catalanote has now worked a 3-1 count against Ginter, and this is exactly what they didn't want with a five-run lead. Hit toward the stands down the left field line and twist back out of play. It'll be 3-2. Well, interesting approach right there. He chased a 3-1 fastball that was off the plate. In that situation, especially being a left-handed hitter, you want to get a ball that's inside you can pull. You can hit it through that hole between first and second. And, and the other thing that happens, it's tougher to turn a double play 4-6-3 than 6-3-4. Mm -hmm. Ginter comes back from a 3-1 count after walking a batter and gets the strikeout. He gets a high fastball. You see it's a four-seamer. Just goes up and just says, I'm going to challenge you. I'm reaching back, coming after you. Boy, up and out of the strike zone, mm -hmm. too. That was ball four. And he knew it, too. Derek Nicholson stands in. 15 home runs, 66 RBIs coming in. He's a senior from Torrance, California. Makes a big cut and misses a kid that uh, Andy Lopez could really identify with and really likes. He was just extremely pleased that he got him at the University of Florida. He nearly left after they recruited him because he was homesick. And it took a while to talk him out of it. But uh, Andy Lopez says he's the kind of kid you want on your team. He just plays as hard as he possibly can every single play. Yeah, the beauty of this kid, he, he grew up in a rough neighborhood. He was a little homesick, wanted to go back, and Andy knew if you stay out here, it's going to give you a little bit more purpose for your life, and he's been able to instill that in this young man and, and really turn him around. And that's what college baseball is all about. Give the guy an opportunity to, to see who he is as a person, grow up, set him a vision for his life, get him on course to do some great things, and, and I'm excited for this young man. Too. Absolutely. it's uh, You always like to hear stories like this, and hats off to Andy Lopez for uh, helping to make it happen for this young man. 0-2 in the dirt, skips away from Patton. He can't find it. It's all the way back to the screen. And it's going to be a two-base mistake. Hustling all the way to third, Casey Smith. Well, that was Patton interesting... never found it. No, he never, he never found that ball. And the interesting thing is the pitcher immediately started pointing to let him know. Now, watch. When he drops down to block it, he thinks he's got this ball in front of him. And he looked to the right real quick. It looked like the umpire might have shielded him from seeing where he thought the ball was going. Now it's totally lost. The pitcher's pointing. Everybody's pointing. And it's, it's a hopeless feeling because there's really nothing you can do. Just go pick up the ball. Good hustle by Smith, though. So they get a runner in scoring position. And the high fastball makes it 2-2. Two and two. A two-base wild pitch charge to Ginter. Well, what that does, too, Mike, by putting that runner at third base, it eliminates a certain pitch that Ginter might throw. He may not want to throw that breaking ball in the dirt now. Two-two popped to very sh medium left field. 
Toms will make the catch. That ball drifted back a little bit, and Smith is going to score from third. Boy, that thing carried. That didn't look like it was any more than 250 feet away from the plate. Just kept going. Sure didn't, but Casey Smith there, you know, the pass ball, hustled all the way, gave the, the coach a good look to wave him all the way to third, put him in this position for this tag up. In other words, they're first and second, or runner on second and a fly out to left. And then a nice piece of hitting to get the fly ball to left field. Nicholson gets the RBI. It's 5-1, to one, and with two outs and nobody on, Ross comes up. Makes a breaking ball at the knees. Good pitch that time from Ginter. He's got that slider. And snapped that one off. Mm -hmm. Ross takes a fastball to dead center field. Brian going back, looking up. It's gone. Ross took a fastball to dead center and killed it. His 19th of the year. He went down and got this pitch and just, like you said, Mike, he killed it. When you hit a ball to center field, you're doing about everything you can as a swinger perfect. He gets a fastball right here. Look at how long he took for him to extend it. This was a no-doubter. Great follow-through, cleared his body nice. That's just a beautiful picture, perfect swing. And I don't know where he's jumping to, but I don't think he's going to catch that one. <laughs> it's the old college try, but he <laughs> wasn't going to get it. Ross with his 19th. It's 5-2. to two. Jason Dill comes up with the bases empty and two gone here in the Florida fifth, or Florida second, excuse me. That's just a big league name, isn't it? Jason Deal. Nice. It just comes off nice. You know, it just rings. He looks like a hitter, too. Here's the 2-0. Mm. Check the swing, took a high 3-0. A week from today, this trophy will be handed out to the winner. The last two years, it has been LSU. The Tigers, the team of the decade. They are not the favorite this year. Matter of fact, there may not be a clear-cut favorite. I mean, LSU showed its power today. Florida looks great. Miami looks great. Yeah, and your hat's off to SC. I mean, they scored 10 runs. Ooh. This one's hit the deep center field. Again, Brian going back, looking up, and it's over the outer wall. Jason Dill with his 16th home run. In the two games today, there have been 14 homers, the majority of them to dead center. Yeah, when you get a ball to dead center, you're doing about everything you can right as a hitter. And what I mean by that is you're not pulling off of it and you're not late. It's a perfect swing. But he took a pitch on 2-0 and on a fastball away that showed me that he knew what he wanted to hit. He was looking for a ball inside or somewhere up the middle, and it, there is no doubt. Look at this, how pretty it is. Follows through. He's got everything perfect. Nice short stroke. Stayed behind the ball. No doubt about it. Harold, if you start pitching these guys with the numbers they have, with that aluminum bat and the size they got, you start throwing that ball down the heart of the plate, they're going over the outer wall in dead center. And I, I think we're at a point also, Mike, here in 1998 where the athletes, they have to make a serious decision about using the aluminum bat because they are bigger, stronger. We're going to see records now because they've got great mechanics, they've got great size, and this afternoon was just an indication of what the rest of this week is going to be like. There's going to be a lot of home runs hit, and we have to start looking at, maybe there has to be, needs to be some changes made. Boy, absolutely. Slap to third. Chapman comes up and throws, and the inning is over. But the Gators answer with three, including back-to-back -back home runs from David Ross and Jason Dill. We have played two full. Mississippi State, 5-3. Oh, my goodness. Travis Chapman to lead it off. LSU actually had, in one trip around the batting order, nine batters had five home runs. Man. Wilkerson trying to help himself here in the third and get the ball over, not walk as many people, really hurt himself. 
in the second inning. Yeah, he's got to forget about the ballpark and just start going after the hitters. He's been wide with everything. Maybe not, Mike. Again to dead center field. Catalanote back as far as he can go and makes it right in front of the 408 sign. Chapman gave it a ride, but about five feet too short. It's a pretty swing. Nice short stroke, good rhythm. I don't think you can hit a ball much better than that. Canelote going back now. Beautiful job of knowing where he's at on the field and not giving up on it because I gave up on it once it left the bat. Well, we're so used to seeing him <laughs> just keep going. Whoa. Well. The umpire takes his mask off and stares at Wilkerson. It's almost to ask. You couldn't have been thrown at a guy. That wasn't even close. That was so far behind him. That wouldn't even scare you, would it, Harold? No. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it just freezes you. You don't know what to do. I was frozen up here. 2-0 uh, and o to Barry Patton. I think what caught the umpire off guard is he's been throwing everything away, away, yeah. away to throw one behind the guy. Fouled straight back off the screen. 2-1. and one. The only guy probably not agreeing with us is Barry Patton. He's sitting down there going, yeah, that's not funny. <laughs> well, Patton would be the last guy you threw at because he walked the first time up. The guy in front of him flew out, so <laughs> you don't go plugging him. Bounced hmm. straight back again. Had a big home run in the uh, regional against Texas A&M, even though he's only hit seven all year long. You know, the one thing also with throwing that ball behind Patton is you shake everybody up a little bit. Now, look how far the umpire stands back. I I've seen Brinkman start doing this this year. Get a little longer view. Called strike three right on the corner. Joe Brinkman in the American League, he has his own umpire's camp. If you look at this pitch right here, and fastball, he gets right on the outside. I mean, when a guy throws the ball behind you, I'm going to be frozen on a pitch away, too. You never know what he's going to do. Two out, nobody on for John Nutt. 0 for 1. Round to third, got an RBI out of it in the second inning. And his average has fallen to 236. Faces a high fastball and doesn't get it. Not a, one of the walk-on players that they have here at Mississippi State. You're only allowed 11.7 scholarships. I don't know what the point seven means. What's that? Somebody's a seventh tenth of a person? A lot of guys are seven tenths. <laughs> Canelanote drifts to his right, makes the catch. That's the third out. Three up, three down for Wilkerson. No score for Mississippi State. It's 5-3 Bulldogs. And as uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys from the generation that never swung wood until I had to when I got into pro baseball. I always used an aluminum bat my whole life. On the corner, 0-2. I, I take that back. Little League, we did use the wood, and then the aluminum mm -hmm. came in the following year. Well, I'd love to see everything go back to wood the way it used to be. Not that I expect that will ever happen, but you can always hope. Popped up sky high on the infield. Chapman calls everybody off and makes the catch. One gone. This June, ESPN and ESPN2 will bring you a combined 50 World Cup 98 matches. We'll yeah, we really do not have a clue. When you... You watch those uh, those games. They're wild. Fans are crazy. Now, we haven't had too many soccer riots over here, have we? <laughs> no. And soccer hooligans traveling from country to country. Of course, I'm glad we missed that part of it. It's a growing sport here, though. Yes, it is, especially with kids. Matt Siegel stands in, takes a called strike from Ginter. Siegel struck out his first time up. Oh. 
Yeah. Smashed off the shortstop Freeman. Makes the throw not in time. Well, that's one of those balls there you just know all you can do is try to stay in front of this ball. But what I like to do on a, if you have time on a ball right at you like this is if you get off to the side of it, it gives you a little better view. If he can move to the side and try to pick it off to the side, you got a chance to be able to get to the side and see the ball a little bit easier. When you're dead on, all you can do is sit there and lock you up, and all you can do is block the ball. If you can slide your feet just a little bit one way or the other, you get your head to the side of the ball, it gives you a little bit better peripheral vision to pick it up. That one just ate him up. So Wilkerson has a man on. Yeah, very interesting uh, alignment that they have with Wilkerson. That they're obviously going to pitch him away. You can see the second baseman right here. They move everything over. And you would think that he would be a pull hitter with his home run numbers. But he did drive that ball left center field. And they have played quite a few games against him. And they have a little bit better idea what we, what we would see. Yes, on. they do. He's got power to all fields, though. So if he gets his pitch, he can drive it out to the opposite field or anywhere else. 2-0. and oh. Up and in 3-0. and oh. Green light, anybody? I would, I would turn this guy loose. And if he's turned loose, he should be looking for a pitch on the inside half, especially the way they've, they've aligned things. Siegel down at first, reached on the tough error, a line drive, short hop to Freeman, and there's a fastball right down Broadway. But as you said, sometimes you'll see guys take a three, and they say, boy, that was a good pitch. It wasn't what he was looking for. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and a lot of times, when you get a 3-0 pitch, you start overthinking, too. You don't want to pop up a 3-0 pitch knowing you could have got two more chances at it. Ball four. Wilkerson has walked 81 times. He leads the club. He is a very discriminating hitter. He will not go after anything. And here's the situation that Casey Smith thrives on. He's, he's hitting 484 at runners in scoring position, but he gets an awful lot of opportunities for that simple fact that Wilkerson has walked an awful lot. And, and Casey Smith, as he goes, the Gators go. He got on the walk, went to third on the the uh, pass ball went all the way around from first to third, ended up scoring on the sack fly. See what he does with the bat. Tying runs aboard for Smith here in the floor to third. Just missed low. When Ginter has missed, he hasn't missed by much. Siegel really uh, looking like he wants to run. Jumping around, get a nice little lead, coming off. Double play ball. Freeman to second. Waterhouse on the lead. 6 4 3, and they get out of the inning. Florida threatens, but does not score. It's 5 3. Miss Better every year, and they just fill it up. Wilkerson misses on the first pitch as we start the Mississippi State fourth inning with Waterhouse, the number nine hitter. Bounced out to second, drove in a run. Chris Lauderhouse went to uh, Children's Hospital, as most of the teams do. And there's a young man named Jacob. He said to tell you that he is wearing your button that he, you gave him. He and Freeman both are wearing them. It's a great time. The athletes go to the Children's Hospital, spend time with kids there, and develop a relationship. Just one of the great little things that you don't see the players doing because all we do is see them on the ball field, but they do That's a right. lot of things here. And it means so much to the people they visit. Just outside three and one to Lauderhouse, who is from Germantown, Tennessee, and started his baseball career at Mississippi, then transfers to Mississippi State. Foul back out of play. And Wilkerson is such a competitor. Watch this here as he goes into second base. You don't see a whole lot of pitchers going in. But this guy's not just a pitcher. He's an athlete. Look at him go in and try to take the man out. I think he's worried about if he gets hurt and has to go back to the mound or maybe taken out of a ball game. He's thinking about winning. That's it. And here's a guy who early next week is going to be a first-round draft choice. He's not thinking about the check either. He's trying to win. You got that right. And that's beautiful to see. Lauderhaus draws a walk to start the fourth inning. Four bases on balls issued by Wilkerson so far. 
He is not at his sharpest tonight, but trying to hang in there. No, and that's the, the one thing about good players. You may not be on your A game every night, but you go out and you continue to compete with what you have You give your, chest, your ball club a chance. And they're still in the ball game. And then two runs back now. He's settled down a little bit. Brings up the top of the order with Weist on a checking throw to first. Weist walked in the second after singling and stealing a base in the first inning. So he's officially one for one. The interesting thing about Weiss is they don't like to hit and run with him. They want him to swing the bat. He is one of their guys they look to to go ahead and, and ignite the offense by swinging the bat. So don't look for a hit and run because he's a leadoff hitter. He's not your prototype leadoff hitter. The 0-1 hit towards short. Ellis goes to second for the force. Martin on to first. The throw is wide. It took a little bit too long. Now, the grass is awful high here at the infield at Rosenblatt, and it, that slowed that ground ball down. As soon as the ball hits, now look at the second hop. There's the first one. Now, the second hop just dies, and the shortstop takes a little bit long to deliver that ball, and they just weren't able to turn it over. But mainly because the grass slowed that ball down, everybody had to slow their actions down. I don't think I've ever seen the grass as high as it's been this year, both in the infield and the outfield. There's a lot of balls have gone into gaps that you expect to roll to the wall, and they don't even get to the warning track. Right, and they had that big downpour the night before uh, the open opener the last yesterday. Right. So that's still sitting here, a little bit slowing the ball down. But you got to do something to make this ballpark competitive. That's right. <laughs> Imagine if they had a fast infield and the way the ball carries. They can't do anything with the ones that are up in the air. They just keep going. At least if they're on the ground, they're a little slower. Rusty Toms, who was homered and fly to right, stands in with a runner at first and one gone here in the Mississippi State fourth inning. Well, Rusty Toms is a guy that you're looking for to have a real short swing. You wonder how to shorten your stroke. Well, look at here at his hands. He's choking up on the bat. Very few guys are going to choke up on the bat because aluminum bats, you're going to get a bat that's 28, 29 ounces, and he's choking up. What that does, it shortens even your barrel that much more and allows you to have that much more bat control. His home run last time was nothing but using his hands. Got to, to the ball quick, exploded off the bat. A lost art, though, Mike. I remember when I was coming up, and you too. Choke up if you get some strikes. I never came up. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't for lack of trying, just ability. <laughs> now, look at here now. Watch how short this stroke is. Chance here. Got a nice little one-two count. He's choked up already. He's in a good position. That's why he's able to make a lot of contact. Another checking throw to first, trying to keep Weeks close, who has ten stolen bases. He's been caught three times. Mississippi State not trying to run yet tonight. Another throw over. Andy Lopez and his coaching staff are seeing something that is uh, getting their attention over at first base. One and two to Tom's wide and first into right field. Nicholson, who has a real good arm, charges and throws. Good defense to keep the runner at second base. Well, that's one of the things you can do when you choke up with the bat. That is great bat control. He's able to stay back, go get a breaking ball. Actually, he goes out and gets this pitch. What's this? What's this? Just stays with it, able to reach and make contact. Now, here's the home one. Watch how short this stroke is. He just brings the hands right to the bat, bat to the ball. See you later. Short stroke. So, Rusty Toms now has two hits on the night, a home run and a single. He's two for three in the heart of the order with Brad Freeman up against Wilkerson. Still only one out. Freeman's one for two with a single so far. Right there, Wilkerson paying attention. He saw the runner starting to skip off and decided to go ahead and do the little wheel play. These two will run. The runners that are on right now, they will apply the pressure. 
took something off of it and Freeman swung through it. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Well, Mike, senior co-captain Brad Freeman came about as close as you possibly can to leaving college ball for the pros. Last year, the Indians picked him in the 12th round, and he decided to sign. He flew up to Burlington, North Carolina, getting set to start A-ball with contract in hand, but something told him it wasn't the right thing to do. He consulted his dad, Steve Freeman, who played NFL football with the Buffalo Bills, and also talked to his coach, Pat McMahon. They all said, do what's in your heart, Brad. Eventually, he put the contract down, returned to Starkville. He says it was the best thing he ever did. I bet the Bulldogs are happy, too. Well, I'm sure they are. I remember his uh, dad when he played free safety for the Bills in the NFL. That, that's one of the toughest decisions for a young man to make. Now, when the runner alerted the middle infielders, they've already shortened up now. Off the fist, straight up the middle. It'll take a hop in front of second. Might have an interference call, and we do. Well, that's no. a tough read for everybody. we got to go back to first. Brian Weiss is called out. They'll send the runner back to first. Right here, he gets a, a fastball in on his hands. Now, the runner at second, he just freezes. He doesn't know what to do. Now, the infielders have the right to go get the ball. That is your one thing that you do have, the right to go get the ball. If the runner interferes with you, inadvertently or advertently, you still have an interference call, and that's what happened on that ball play, that play right there. So the runner from second is out. The runner from first will go to second, and the batter takes first. But I don't know why that becomes a dead ball. I don't either. It should be runners advance at their own risk. Yes. Unless they're saying he could have caught that ball, or maybe they're saying it's the infield fly rule. I didn't see anybody put up an arm for an infield fly rule. And that was an awful uh, shallow ball being yes, an infield fly rule. It is not. If anything, the runners should be set at first or second, and you get a dead ball. That's right. Well, that's definitely not an infield fly, although it took, took that type of swing, but the ball's not up long enough. Now, right there, he's saying this runner is out for, for the interference. interference. And that's correct. But the other two guys should be set. Now, if the runner, the batter doesn't run to first base and they pick up the ball and throw him out, then we got a whole nother fiasco. So the situation is two on with two out, and Richard Lee at the place to plate to face Wilkerson. The infielder is entitled to go after the ball. The runner cannot block him if he has a play on the ball. In fact, I have seen plays where the umpires ruled on a pop-up that the runner had to leave a base he was standing on so the third baseman could catch the ball. Otherwise, he was going to be guilty of interference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely right. Well, we've seen a lot of bizarre things already in this game, and it is only the fourth <laughs> inning. That's right. Two on, two out top of the fourth. Mississippi State with a two-run lead. They got five in the second. Go down to Dave Ryan again, Dave. Our well, guys here in the Mississippi State dugout, Coach Pat McMahon was complaining to his staff and players a moment ago. He felt Florida Gator shortstop Mark Ellis may have run into his runner on purpose to maybe create an intentional interference. That's what he's upset about, and that's why he was talking to the umpires a few moments ago. I think Pat might be reaching a little bit on that. That's kind of, that's some quick thinking if he's able to do yep. that. Another walk, and that will load them up as Lee draws ball four. That's the fifth free pass issued by Brad Wilkerson. Well, let's go back and look at this, and, and you be the judge. Does it look like it? I don't think he has time enough to do that, but we'll see. No. No, he's going straight for the ball. Well, Pat McMahon is a very sharp guy, and he was trying to take get the best advantage out of that that he could. Base is loaded, line to center field, base hit. That's going to get two runs home. And it's 7-3 Mississippi State as Brooks Bryan delivers. Well, Brooks Bryan is, is doing a lot of things that dispel that lefty-lefty theory. He hit the home run to left field and drives this ball to left center field. What a lot of left-handers will do is take an approach the other way. He's thinking about hitting the ball the other way, and he stays on this breaking ball and drives it right in there, left center field. Beautiful piece of hitting. Thompson Freeman score easily seven to three Bulldogs 
Runner still at first and second with two out for Travis Chapman. I think this is going to be a little stall tactic. They're trying to get somebody down in the bullpen to throw a little bit more. When you see a catcher take a nice little slow walk to the plate, and now the umpire is going to trail, and you're just buying a little time for that man in the bullpen to get loose. Josh Fogg is heating up. He's been out there quite a while, so he's ready to come in if uh, they want him. And Wilkerson's really been touched up in addition to the five walks that he is a pitcher with the last name Fogg is going to be bringing it. Yeah. And he can. 88, 91 mile an hour. You're going to see a sinker. We just saw a curveball right there. He's a sinker, slider, curveball, change type of guy. Main pitch is going to be that fastball. Breaks one outside against Travis Chapman. It is 2 0. Oh. Chapman fly to center, walked and scored back in the second inning. Been a clutch hitter for them this year. Takes ball three. Fogg has only walked 23 batters in 75 innings while striking out 105, but he hasn't found the plate yet. Runners at first and second, two out, and missed badly. Walked him on four pitches. Well, the one thing, Mike, that we haven't really touched on much is the crowd. They're pitching in front of 20-some thousand people. That This is a big crowd for most guys, and when you start getting in front of a huge crowd, your adrenaline flows in. So it's not necessarily you can't control your pitch. You can't control the adrenaline yep. that is flowing through you to allow you to control your pitch. Good point. For the second time in this game, the Bulldogs have batted around. John Knott, the ninth man to hit in this inning. He is 0 for 2. Excuse me, this is uh, Patton, the eighth man to hit. Chapman drew the walk. My scorebook's already a mess. Right there with you. Hmm. And David Ross is going to go out to talk to him. Well, settle him down a little bit and just needs to throw a strike. That's six straight balls. But it doesn't look like he's had much uh, rhythm out there. He's just falling all over the plate. And the main thing he needs to do is just gather himself, throw a pitch down the middle. But the toughest thing to do is you throw a pitch down the middle with the bases loaded. And you might get hurt. Seven straight off the plate out of the bullpen for Fawn. And there's no place to put Barry Patton. I think Patton is sitting there taking a couple pitches right here. If I'm over there uh, coaching, six walks and one hit batter. That's not a very snappy three and two thirds. Patton has three grand slams in his career. Takes a fastball in there. And a sigh of relief from Fogg. Well, I, I think he's going to go ahead and have that green light right here. You got a chance to break this game wide open. Chops it back up the middle. Could be a tough play. Grabbed by the shortstop. The throw not in time. Here comes another run of the plate. The throw not in time. Two run score. That's just great hustle by Brooks Bryan, who kept coming from second base. You're absolutely right, Mike. Brooks Bryan has done some great things today already. He has some nice at-bats, nice approaches, but the main thing he did there is he kept running the whole way, applying the pressure. Gave your coach something, to a good look to wave you home, to keep you waving. The throw to first was wide of Dill. He bobbled it. If he comes up cleanly with that, he's got a chance to throw him out easily at the plate, but he didn't. Well, he really came up with a nice play to cut this ball off. Now, you're not going to get the guy. If he makes a strike, to the, he's got a chance to get him. The other thing you want to do is maybe come up and just hold that ball, wheel, come to the plate, because you know the guy is going to be coming trying to score from second. Strike call on the outside. Dustin Dabbs is on as a pinch hitter. For not dabs a 267 hitter. Checks his swing. 
Singles hitter, gap hitter. Two runners aboard. Another two runs in. It is 9-3, takes a fastball. That ball had a little bit of zip on it. Fastball inside, two and two. He's got some giddy up on it, but he just hasn't been able to get many of them over. He really, he really hasn't. And he, the one worst thing he could possibly do is step off the mound each time and keep thinking about what he's doing. He needs to get himself, just get the ball and get it and throw. Get yourself into a good rhythm. Missed outside. It's a full count. Wilkerson watching everything slip away from him and his Gator teammates right now. Well, it's not what you want to happen your first game back to the World Series. Dustin Dabbs pinch hitting here in the fourth. Line drive down the left field line, a base hit. They'll hold him to a single, but it is 10-3 Mississippi State. Dabbs delivers. That was just a pretty piece of hitting. These Mississippi State hitters have been very well coached. They've got some great approaches. They've had some great at-bats. Look at him take this fastball and just stay with it and drive the pass to third baseman. Beautiful stroke. Didn't try to pull it. Didn't try to do any more than what he needed to. And that is just, you can't ask for anything better than that. Sweet looking shot from the pinch hitter. Everything they're doing is right right now. Absolutely. Fog misses down low again. Florida comes in as the number one seed in the tournament. Mississippi State, the eighth seed. And right now, number eight, which has won only one game against the University of Florida since 1991, has a big leg up on number two. Fog misses again with a fastball. 2-0. Well, you, you, got, you got the feeling the other day at the banquet we had to go to and, and come into the batting practice and spend time with uh, all the teams that Florida State was on, I mean, uh, Mississippi State was almost like the Rodney Dangerfield of the field. Exactly. Not a whole lot of respect there. But they have come out and showing everybody. And, you know, nobody's been talking about Mississippi State. And it's sort of, you know, that's fine. <laughs> just don't talk about us. We'll go out and play baseball. You know, just leave us alone. We don't, we don't need the attention. Boy, he really had a calm demeanor this morning, Didn't though. He? And I'll tell you, he was almost like he was looking past this game zoning in on LSU. He knows the type of talent he has. I think, I don't think, I'm not saying he expected his team to go out and score 10 runs in the first four right. of his ball game, but he's very confident in this young man that he has out there playing. Fogg has yet to retire anyone coming out of the bullpen, the ace of the Florida staff. So Wilkerson's book is done. He'll be charged with nine runs of the 10 in his three and two thirds innings. This one is lined to right by Weiss. And the bases are loaded as they hold the runner a third in respect for Nicholson's good arm. Check it, that's Lauterhaus with the base hit. It will bring up Weiss. Nicholson uh, has shown us that good arm a couple of times. Comes off hard off that back. Well, once again, there's the other guy in the lineup choking up, just going the other way with this ball. Mississippi State hitters taking what they give you. They're not playing to the ballpark, and that's, that's something to speak for their team. A lot of, a lot of young hitters. Weiss fanned at a breaking ball at... Uh, right when I say that, Weiss goes... Yeah, that's right. Wild, but really, to most respect to, the, to their hitters, they have not played to try and hit the ball out of the ballpark. They've stayed within their swings and they've had great approaches. Another breaking pitch just missed high. One and one to Weiss. The bases loaded again. 10-3 Mississippi State. Ten men have come up. Five hits, three walks, and five runs so far in the inning. Swung at a breaking ball. Missed again. One and two. 
Well, changing his little sequence here. He started to throw a little bit of a breaking ball now and getting ahead of the hitter. Greslovsky warming again the side armor in the Florida bullpen. Fastball called strike three. The inning is finally over, but Mississippi State does even more damage. The Bulldogs at the end of three and a half lead it ten to three. Base is low. Mississippi State with two runs in the second, two runs in the fourth. Off of All American Brad Wilkerson, who gives up nine to the ten. Well, and Pat McMahon has seen his ball club stake to a nice lead here. Another thing that's interesting, Larry, is you do see some very good pitchers get hit hard in this tournament. They're throwing now more pitches than they've ever thrown in their whole lives. They're moving into they're treading into a territory that they've never been in. So some of them might be a little bit tired. That Chris fastball that they had back in in March is not the same as it is now. Catalanota will lead it off. Hits it hard down the left field line and deep. Rusty Tom dives and can't get it. Catalanota cruises into second base and he'll hold there with a double. That was a heck of an effort. He went a long ways to get that ball to even put his glove on it. Here he is. We look at the, the great effort. He looked this thing in and just dives. That's a great effort. Uh, just barely off the glove. Toms has worked very hard to become a good defensive outfielder, and he gave it everything, as Harold pointed out on that one. And these guys are not playing on a familiar field. They're used to playing uh, in SEC ballparks, mainly at their own, of course. Dude. Nicholson currently hitting 365 with Catalanote at second base. Nicholson had an RBI earlier with a sacrifice fly. Checks the swing on the low pitch. 2 0. Oh. Well, the other thing, uh, Catalanote comes up there and swings at the first pitch. So they know they got a long ways to go in this game. You would think, take some pitches, get some runners on. They're going to stay aggressive and keep coming after you. This is a group of free swinging kids. Fouled straight back. Really, this is the heart of Vandy Lopez's uh, first recruiting class at the University of Florida. Mm -hmm. All the juniors are first class that he had. It's quite a compliment, actually, already be in Omaha. Well, you knew he'd be a success with the job he did at Pepperdine, the great kids he had out there, the opportunity to go to Florida. Just an outstanding baseball man, and he said this is a continuing education for him because he has had to change his philosophy in self-defense. The uh, steal, bunt, hit and run, it, it worked on the West Coast and it was just fine, but things have evolved so quickly in college baseball, he had to go out and find some big fellas. Well, I, li I like the word used there, self-defense, because really that's what it's become. A lot of home runs, a lot of small ballparks, he's had to go out and change his whole philosophy. Two and two to Nicholson. Goes after a high fastball and fouls it back. But looking at Nicholson really typifies what Andy Lopez is all about. I, I really think talking with him this morning how important it is for him to get quality young men in his program. If you're not a quality young guy, you're not going to go to the University of Florida and play baseball. And that speaks volumes not only for him, but really all the teams here. You're not going to get here unless you've got class individuals. Inside fastball, full count. Andy was uh, persona non grata in some quarters when he first went to the University of Florida because he got rid of some guys who he didn't think were good for the program. They, they had some talent, but he wasn't the kind of guys he wanted playing to the University of Florida baseball team. Hammered towards second base. Waterhouse comes out, throws him out, one gone. Join ESPN tomorrow at 1.30 for the Cart Miller Lite 200. The Milwaukee Mile race action big gear in the Gator fourth inning. Strike call. Well, Ross hit a bomb to center field his last time up. He's got a chance to drive in another run. They're going to give him a run. They got the whole infield back. He's able to make contact. That's a big run to pick up early in the game. 
And I say early in the game because it is only the fourth inning, it even is. though we've been here a little while time-wise. And we're going to be here a lot longer, too, partner. <laughs> yes, indeed. Ross has hit very well against Mississippi State this year. 505 home runs. Slaps at this one, got it off the right side. Bobbled by the first baseman Lee. Can't make a play. It's an error, and the run scores. It's got him a little in between hop there. And when you've already put 13 runs on the board, and right there the 14th run coming across, that means there's going to be a lot of action in that infield. And he gets a ball that just get a little bit choppy. It bounces up on him. See that last hop just took a nice little bounce up. He had it centered, had squared up. His head was there. Everything was there. The ball took a bad hop. And that just hit one of those places that the spikes have been going across a little bit too much. Catalanote scores to make it 10 to 4. And the Gators are such a capable offensive team. They can explode for five, six runs easily. Ross will get an RBI on that play. The run would have scored with or without the error. And Jason Dill, who also has a home run, stands in now. Takes a fastball low and outside, 2-0. Oh. A, a lot of times as an infielder, I learned from watching Ryan Sandberg, you'd always see him moving his feet back and forth. All he was doing was clearing out the spot in front of him. You'd see him walking all the way up to the grass, clearing out the surface as if he was dragging the field himself. Hard foul, out of play, two and one. You gotta take care of your own territory, Harold. You pick up the shortstop there from Mississippi State. He's got, he's, he's, Freeman's been around. He knows what to do. See how he's smoothing that, those areas out? You pick out the little patches that you know the ball's gonna be bouncing at. You gotta take care of that territory, like you said. Nobody's gonna do it for you. No <laughs> high and outside. That's three and one to do. Now the grounds crew will come out and drag the field, sometimes after the fifth, sometimes after the seventh. When you had as much traffic out there already in the fourth, you got to do a little groundskeeping yourself. Once in nine innings is not enough for infielders. <laughs> no, I could do it every inning. Here's the three-one to Dill. Too high, walked him. Dill's a good-looking hitter. This lineup is full of good-looking hitters. Mm. Ty Martin, the number nine man, will come up. Pat McMahon getting some action off his bench down in the bullpen, getting some people ready just in case Ginter can't get out of trouble. With a six-run lead, he's probably very comfortable with that. But he doesn't want any less than that either. Martin takes one outside. Ginter's actually uh, doing a nice gallant effort. He's throwing an awful lot of pitches too. At 68 pitches and another ball. One of Mississippi State's uh, great strengths is you see Hank Toms warming in the bullpen. There are three Toms on this roster, by the way, two brothers and a cousin. Rusty, the starting left fielder, is the cousin. They have a very deep pitching staff, so they can go to that bullpen and not be as hurt nearly as much as other teams in this field. And, Mike, a lot of pitchers run into struggle right now because He's got a six-run lead, and he knows he gets the W. And you start pressing, trying to, if I can just get through the fifth. He's in the fourth right now, but if I get through the fifth, then I get the W, and they can go to the bullpen all they want. And you can see he's just starting to press a little bit. Have a little conversation, go out, settle him down. He hasn't thrown that many pitches. He's a big, strong kid. And 68 pitches is not a whole lot of pitches. It's a lot for four innings, but right. not in reference to the fact that they have a deep bullpen. He can, exactly. he can go out there and air it out, throw your innings, get five or six innings in, and, and the bullpen's gonna be able to pick him up. 2-0 to the number nine hitter, Ty Martin, the sophomore from West Melbourne, Florida. Too high, ball three. A leadoff double got the first run rally started. Fastball in there, three and one. 
nothing more frustrating than to see a walk, a walk. All of a sudden, the ball's hit to you, you boot it. Another fastball popped up on the infield. Third baseman Chapman in foul territory, two gone. So he was behind 3-0 and came back to get him. Well, he just made him hit the ball. That's what you want to do. You want to make a guy hit the ball. Yeah, if a guy hits 300, that means he's failed seven times. Exactly. Make him hit the ball. Make him put it in play. And right there, Martin got a good pitch to hit. He just missed it. And that's going to happen. If the pitcher continues to throw strikes, it, the percentages are going to go your way. Back to the top of the order for Mark Ellis. Lined to third and popped to third. Hits this one in the air to straightaway left. Toms comes on. He'll make the catch. So the Gators threaten but get only one run out of it. And at the end of four, still trailing number eight Mississippi State, 10-4. You don't get in this kind of shape running on a treadmill. You do. Aluminum is you have to have such stronger hands to use that wood bat. Aluminum bat, you can hold it in your fingertips and just flick the ball. With a wood bat, you really got to have strong hands. You use your hands and your forearms to generate the bat speed. Hit high in the air, deep to right. Nicholson going back, nearing the track. He'll make the catch. And so that's what takes, guys, the biggest adjustment because you don't work on when you're in the weight room and you know you're going to swing an aluminum bat. You don't work on building up your forearms and your hands and your wrists. You work on upper body. That's why these guys come out here looking like Atlas. That's you know, right. Bronze bodies up here. But they don't work on their wrists and the forearms. And that's the area that you need to work on if you want to be able to swing a wooden bat because that's what you're going to have to have at that next level. Showed that, that earlier clip of uh, Freddie Lynn. He is, uh, of course, a member of the broadcast fraternity now, out here working as the analyst for uh, CBS with Sean McDonough earlier today on their game. Well, what a great player he was. Great golfer, too. I think uh, Freddie probably making more money playing golf now than he did when he played baseball. <laughs> Sandbagging some people, huh? Brad Freeman with nobody on and one out slaps it to third. Siegel has played much better defensively down there. Throws him out. At 22 errors on the year, it has been a, a tough season for him, but he is getting much, much better defensively at third. Yeah, he's finally got a chance to settle into one position. When you're bouncing around all over the infield, you get different angles. Tough, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Right here, this is a tough play because Freeman is often running on this ball, and Siegel comes up, rounds it off, sets himself solid, and makes a very strong throw to throw him out. Look at Freeman hustling down the line. That's why the scouts like him so much. That's why he's been drafted two times. And will be drafted a third time. Absolutely. <laughs> Richard Lee, officially 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch, hitting 357. Hanging breaker inside. Well, Fogg likes to use that slider to settle himself down. He's tried to throw it right there on a 1-0 count just to get yourself back in a nice rhythm. You got to really set yourself to throw a breaking ball more than you do a foul. Tap right back to the mound. Fogg will throw to first, and it's an easy route. He's given up four runs so far. This one's hit toward the hole. Freeman with a good stop, sets and guns him out. Nice play by shortstop Brad Freeman, the best athlete on the Mississippi State Ball Club. And you said it exactly right. What a great athlete. That was a nice play. Set up and comes up with a strong arm. He's had an opportunity tonight to really show some scouts what he can do. You die to see a guy go in the hole and come up with a strong throw like this. Look at him set and throws a bullet. This ball has such great carry. It's going through the first baseman. That's how you can tell if a guy's got a good arm or if it's just going to die, if it's going to carry through the first baseman. He's a very good shortstop, but they say really his uh, center field skills will probably carry him through pro ball. Well, versatility is the key. The more positions you can play, the more opportunities you're going to get. Wilkerson lays it down. And boy, when the big guy bunts one, it's almost like Mickey Mantle. It's a gimme. They play him so deep, and he hits the ball so hard that when he puts one down the third baseline, he's on. Well, it's the fifth inning. He's going to do anything to help his team get started. And that's just 
sitting around recognizing what's going on. And really, this is a beautiful punt. I mean, he's bunting for a base hit all the way, and he knew it. Chapman never even thought about making a throw. There was no no need. And no no chance. So Wilkerson, knowing his team needs base runners, gets on for Casey Smith. In the dirt, gets away. And Wilkerson will cruise into second base on the wild pitch. And now you got a runner in scoring position. That's uh, heads up baseball by Wilkerson. I got to tip my hat to him to just paying attention. Right here, tough pitch to block. He actually thought that ball was going to carry to him. He didn't reach out to catch it. He just already had started, decided he was going to block it. Wasn't able to catch it. Wasn't able to pick it. 1 and 0 to Smith. Check swing 1 and 1. Smith has walked and hit into a double play in his two trips tonight. A lot of transfers in college baseball. He's a transfer from TCU playing his second year for the Gators. Well, baseball is the one sport you can jump from school to school without having to sit out of exactly. out of here. One time. Mm -hmm. Fastball hit down the right field line, twisting back into the stands. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Dave? Well, guys, Florida assistant coach Steve Kling has a very interesting ritual. Every time the Gators or one of his teams, he's been on Andy Lopez's staff since the two were back at Pepperdine in 1992. They won a national championship. That year in this vial, he took some dirt from the infield there, mixed it with the Rosenblatt field dirt, then spread it on the field as a ritual before the game started. Did the same thing in 96 with the Florida Gators from McKeithen Stadium down in Gainesville, brought some dirt with them, mixed it here in Omaha and put it out. Did the same thing here tonight. So that means combined had some from Omaha back in 92, 96, the Pepperdine Field and McKeithen Stadium dirt as well, all in the magic vial trying to get that exact <laughs> mixture, guys, for the big win. Got a lot of contaminated dirt out here, don't we? <laughs> Fastball hit toward third. Chapman checks the runner and then makes the throw. Getting that dirt out of California, you know, off the beach there, you might start <laughs> seeing Genie coming out of that little thing there. Well, I dream of Genie. Nice play there by uh, Chapman. You know, Chapman's known for having a quick first step. The third baseman there, the, we saw him catch the line drive. And right there, the ball hit to his left, takes a quick first step, puts him in nice position to make that throw across the plate. Got a nice defensive game. Got to make the routine plays. Mm -hmm. Catalanote, one for two, stands in. Tapped foul. And Mike kind of lost in this inning is Ginter settling down and starting to throw strikes. And when a pitcher does that, your defense comes up with plays that we've, we've seen. He looked a little shaky in the fourth, too. Uh, maybe that was uh, the inning he needed to get through. said in that conversation when they went to the mound but he's been a different pitcher since settling down a little bit maybe put it in perspective a lot of times you get so in a fog out on the field he didn't realize I got six runs to work with coach got to remind you that hit right at the first base for the Richard Lee he'll take it himself Florida 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position the Gators still trail by six and senior Brooks Bryan has had quite a night already. Well, he's had a great night against the left-hander. He's staying here. This is a home run to left field. Watch his approach. Looking to go left center field right here with the base hit to drive in, too. We'll see what he does against the right-hander now, but he really has had a nice approach, keeping that front shoulder in, thinking about going the other way, and he's shown the power to be able to do it. And obviously, you get a 350 batting average when you're using the whole ballpark. Average is up to 350 after his ninth home run and a single. He leads off the sixth for Mississippi State against Fogg, who came on in relief of All-American Brad Wilkerson, who was hammered for nine. Fogg has also settled down since he struggled with his control after coming in. He really has. You know, we tend to forget these guys are 18 to 21 years old. 
And you're playing in front of a national audience. 20-some thousand people in the stands. Breaking ball for called strike three. Take you a little while to settle down. And that's a great point because th there's so many nerves. This is the biggest thing in their lives to this point. Right, and as, as we look at this slider here, he set him up nice. He threw the fastball in, then he went away with the fastball and throws the slider away. He had no idea what was going to be coming that at bat. But back to your point, Mike, it's not like college basketball or football where every weekend they are playing in front of big, big crowds. By the That's time right. they go to a bowl game, it's nothing new. Now, even in the Southeastern Conference, which draws uh, tremendous local crowds, is nothing to compare to what they see here at Rosenblatt. Exactly. When they have a big crowd in college baseball, it's 5,000 people. Here they approach 25. Swing and a miss. Consecutive strikeouts for Josh Fogg. Well, I think we're seeing the fog that uh, Lopez expected to see when he put him in. He was just a little bit nervous, but he has really settled down. He's got the breaking ball working right here. Just got him out in front on that hook. But he's setting up his pitches, and that's why he's getting swings like that right there. He's throwing that fastball, establishing the strike zone, and then being able to throw that breaking ball to get him out. He has retired the last six men he has faced and starts batting off with a call strike. Now he's gone fastball, fastball, and then the breaking ball to put him away. Let's we'll see what he does to Pat. Woo, just missed on the corner. Coming into the College World Series, he had not allowed an earned run in seven of ten appearances. Had two saves in the regional. Breaking ball strike two. Yeah, he has really settled down. He's throwing the ball nice. Well, it's what you would expect to see from a guy who led the nation in earned run average this year during the regular season. And in the last two innings, 17 pitches, 15 strikes, make it 16, and he struck out the side. Josh Fogg sets them down in order in the sixth. But Mississippi State continues to hold on to the big lead. The coach and his wife, Linda, convinced Derek to stay. It's a good thing, too. He got the help he needed. Now he's set to graduate, guys, in recreational programs next year. And after that, get his master's degree. He's come a long, long way. And he said it was the best decision he ever made to come back to play at Florida. Well, that's a great story, too. And he rips one there for a base hit. And what does it say about uh, the school system that you get to be a junior in college before the school systems find out you're dyslexic? I'm telling you, a lot, of, a lot of times all you need is somebody to push you, challenge you, but they also have to understand you. And he understands this pitch right here. He gets a fastball <laughs> and just mean? hammers it past the first baseman. It's a tough play. Beautiful swing. He's got no chance catching that ball, even though it took a little nasty hop. But that ball was smoked. Nicholson, one for two on the night. Had an RBI with a sacrifice fly. Well, Nicholson's done some damage. Ross has done some damage. They're moving into the part of the order that you didn't expect. The Deals bottom. swung the bat real well. He had a home run earlier. So we'll see what Florida's able to manufacture this inning. Good lead for Nicholson. And 2-0 and oh on David Ross from Ginter. And Hank Toms up again in the Mississippi State bullpen. He's not afraid to bust you inside either. I saw that last pitch. Powell tipped into the catcher's glove. Barry Patton hung on to that one. Well, that's a little indication of how hard he's throwing. He's still throwing the ball pretty good. That's a 2-0 fastball. Well, Ross has just had a pitch up and in on him, and you know you're sitting in there going, throw me a fastball, I'm going to hit it to the next place. Let's do it right by him. Reached for that one and slapped it out of play. And you know Pat McMahon is not going to be comfortable, even with a six-run lead against Florida. Six runs in college baseball, the way these kids hit now, is not all that much. They've rewritten the, the, old, the unwritten rule of when to run and when not to run. <laughs> yeah. Fouled back out of play. That looked like a hanging breaking ball that he got away with. Mm -hmm. As the lights are starting to take a little bit of effect here. 
start to let those eyes adjust. 2-2 Two -two to Ross. Slapped through the hole. That one had eyes. Not hit at all, but in the perfect place for a base hit. And that ball seemed to pick up speed once it got into the, the dirt. You know, we talk about the slow grass, but what that does is you have the slow grass. Watch it get the slow grass. And now to take off on the dirt, just change speeds. And as an infielder, you're trying to get over there to cut that ball off, and you're reacting off the first initial speed that you see the ball coming. That's what you've read as you see Freeman going after this, and all of a sudden it just took off on him. Toms will come on. Ginter is done here in the sixth. Gets a standing ovation from the Mississippi State fans. And we'll check out the pitching change when we come back to the College World Series in Omaha. There's a board with nobody out. And Mississippi State has gone to its bullpen for Hank Toms. 6'3", 205, a right-hander from Newton, Mississippi. 5-2 and two on the year with a 4-2-4 ERA. Six saves out of the bullpen. This is his 28th appearance, the 27th in relief, and he will face Jason Dill in the dirt on the first pitch, blocked by Patton. Dill homered and walked so far for the Gators. This guy right here has got what you call a snapdragon yellow hammer breaking ball. One of those <laughs> Burt Bly 11 curves. Six to 12 to 6 breaking ball. He, that's his out pitch. We'll have to look for that. Scouting report on him says he has a very average fastball. That was a look at that down low, 2 and 0. Oh. He's got to establish that fastball to get to that breaking pitch. Or else they'll hammer him and deals. He's got some pop. He's already hit one today. Has 16 on the season. Fastball on the corner of the knees outside. Get a look at uh, Kemper there. Courageous game. Really did. Stands to be the winner if they can hold the lead and took something on. Yes, he did. Nice pitch. Yeah, it really was. Uh, he's in a fastball count. You know, Deals is looking to juice one, put him back within three, and next thing you know, you never know what's going to happen. Got him a little change up, just tailed away. It was a beautiful pitch. He hadn't shown it yet. And the same arm action as the fastball. I know he thought that was a fastball coming out of his hand. Just going to say, had great arm speed on it, so it, it looks like the fastball, and it just floats up there. And another one. And they're going to say he went around and it struck him out. Couldn't hold up on the pitch in the dirt. Well, he hasn't needed to use that number one breaking ball yet because he hadn't gotten a breaking ball count, but looks like a little... Uh, the down arc looks like it might have been a breaking ball. I he think tried it was. to check his swing right there. I, I stand corrected, but he checks his swing. You got to start your bat, but the ruling is once it goes past the plate, or it looks like it might be an attempt to swing, they can call it, and that's what they did. Ty Martin, the number nine hitter now, with one out and two aboard for the Gators. He is 0 for 2. Toms misses with a fastball, 2-0. and oh. Toms is going to get most of his strikeouts, almost one an inning, with that breaking ball. Fastball in the corner, 2-1. and one. Well, last time he had the 2-1 count, he went with that changeup. We'll see if he throws the changeup right here. And the Gators haven't done anything when they have had runners in scoring position tonight, even though they have four runs. A lot of that could be nerves, too, in the well, college world yeah, series. Yeah, it very well could be, but they've really pitched well with some runners in scoring they position, have. too. They've been wild, wild, wild to get a runner in scoring position, and they pitched pretty good. Nice pitch there. Nothing over the heart of the plate. He's painting corners. It really is. And his out pitch is the breaking ball right here. Another fastball. Just kind of tailing on that. 
He's changed speeds on his fastball. That's what's made him really effective. He doesn't throw overpoweringly hard, but he's changed speeds on the fastball. 2-2 two -two to Ty Martin. Straight away center. Brian comes on. He can't get there. And the bases will be loaded. Good backup on the overthrow by the pitcher Hank Toms. And now the bases are juiced. We'll go back to the top of the order. The runner at second. Nicholson had to hold to make sure the ball wouldn't be caught. The center fielder gave it a great read. He came in strong on it. With the light changing right now, I didn't anticipate him getting that great of a jump. I guess he's seen the ball pretty good. But had to go ahead and let that ball fall in. He got a nice jump on it, though. We've already had two grand slams in the series and the eight teams in the College World Series so far a combined six for ten with the bases loaded four singles a couple of home runs and 18 RBIs and Ellis takes a straight change for a called strike Tom's with that very deceptive change of speed mm -hmm. <laughs> There's the breaking ball, got away from the catcher. Here comes the runner, the play at the plate, he's safe. And the throw gets away and goes in the dugout. Another run will score. The trouble with a huge breaking ball is if it hits in the dirt, it's going to be tough for the catcher, and Patton couldn't get that one. Well, Patton's had some tricky hops back there trying to block some balls tonight. This one right here. Like you said, it's the breaking ball. He doesn't get the glove out. It looked like he was just trying to self-defense block. It bounced off and went away from him and came up and tried to force a throw. At this point, you hang on to the ball. Hang on to the ball. Now you got to start playing control baseball when you're Mississippi State. Just hang on to the ball as you see Kenner's reaction there. Wild pitch, then an error on the throw, allowing the second run to score. Now you set up a runner at third with one out. Yeah, Ty Martin gets all the way down to third, and it's a two and one count now to Ellis. The infield is back. They'll give up the run for another out. And once again, that runner going to third base puts a little bit more pressure on the catcher and the pitcher. It might change your pitch selection because you don't want to bounce one. Got the call on the low fastball, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, he sure did. But the hitter's got to be aware of that fact, too, that he's more likely going to throw a fastball now instead of the breaking pitch because they've bounced three balls in the plate that haven't been blocked today. Two and two to Ellis. His job is just to get this one in play to get the run home. Foul outside third. All right, this is a perfect indication that he doesn't want to bounce the pitch. This is a guy who loves to throw that breaking ball. He has a reputation for it. To get the out pitch, he's got a guy with a 2-2 count. Go ahead and snap one off on him. He throws a fastball. Well, when you see him bouncing to the backstop, it's uh, pretty tough to throw the next one. There it is. Tapped out in front of the plate. Toms hustles off the mound, throws him, got him, and the runner has to hold the third. Well, he had the confidence in at that time, and boy, it is a big breaker. Yes, it is. That is Uncle Charlie with a capital U. Here it is. We get a good look at it right there. We watch him bounce off and make the play. This is a nice play. Throws a strike. Martin forced to hold at third, so two outs for Matt Siegel. held hitless tonight. I wouldn't be surprised to see Siegel bunt right here in this situation. You got the whole right side of the infield back. The third baseman is even giving him the ball back. He's slow to the gap in right center. It's 10-7, and this one will roll all the way to the wall. Siegel around second, makes the quick turn and holds there with an RBI double. Well, he had something else in mind other than that bunt, didn't he? Although it was wide open, you were right, he could have run all day, but he ran all day on that one. 
Got a fastball out over the plate. Look at the weight shift right there. Nice weight shift, stayed behind the ball and just drove this baby into the gap. Beautiful timing. You got a pitch right down the middle. You get a pitch down the middle in a 1-0 a count, you're definitely not gonna miss it. The red shirt freshman from Tampa showing beautiful form, cracks a double in the gap. It's 10-7 and here come the Gators. Wilkerson, who is now the DH. Takes a breaking ball high and outside. Florida has come from behind 28 times this year already. With all that power. And trying to do it again. Strike on the corner. Well, they're not going to give him much to hit. They're not going to give him anything to drive, put it that way, especially with the right-hander Casey Smith on deck, even though Casey Smith, good hitter. The flags are blowing out. The wind was really whipping earlier today, gusting to 25. Hit on the ground toward the second baseman, Waterhaus. Comes up and throws him out. So the Gators have closed to within three. We played six full of the College World Series. On a youth baseball video. Settle down into a nice rhythm, Mike. One gone, and he'll face Lotterhouse. The second hitter of the inning, and we'll go back to the top of the order for the Bulldogs, who have beaten the University of Florida once since 1991. Number two would be sweet because it would come here in the College World Series. Hammered to right. Nicholson going back, turned the wrong way, and it's over his head off the wall. Lauterhaus played it safely and held up at second. The fans wanted to see him try for third. Well, you're not going to see a whole lot of triples in this ballpark because the dimensions are very short, 360 in the gap to right field. So that doesn't give a guy a whole lot of time to run. But it's a nice stroke, drives the ball the other way. Now, like you said, Nicholson got twisted. We see the end result of that right there. We see him twist. He started to go over the other shoulder, turn around. Now, what happens when a right-hander hits the ball to right field? It's going to slice towards the right field line. He was playing it as if it was going to be slicing towards the other way and had to twist around, try to get back. And when you do that, you lose a couple of steps, and he couldn't reach it at the wall. Back to the top of the order and a called strike on Weiss. This ballpark is there is a jet stream to right field. The ball doesn't carry as well to left as it does to right. It seems like once it gets over the big stadium here, it starts to take off. He's gotten that jet stream, and that's part of what happened to him right there. He thought it was going to be a routine fly. You get over the seating, the stands is here, and the ball starts to carry. Twisted him up. That last curveball, unhittable from Fogg. 0-2 to Weiss. Fastball that was real close. Well, Fogg has really shown an extraordinary confidence now. In, in the beginning of the game, he was stepping off. He was taking a lot of time to pick up the pitch. He and the catchers got him, got into a nice rhythm now, and, and I think as a result, he's pitching the ball a lot better. Missed on the outside corner again. We has got a pretty good eye taking two of those puppies. <laughs> Sure does. A lot of nerve. Of course, if you hit 420 something, I guess you do have a good eye. Fanned at that one, struck him out. Started the breaking ball across the plate and got him to go for it. He, he had an idea that he wanted to swing at a breaking ball right here, and he just got one that ended up being off the plate. See how close he is to the plate. He laid off those two fastballs, and on the 2 2 count, he was looking for a hook right there and just got out in front of it. Toms takes a call strike on a fastball at 90 miles an hour. Been very impressive throwing the ball after he, since he settled down. Missed with that one. We told you about uh, the ever increasing attendance here at Omaha. Another session record tonight, 22,879 here at Rosenblatt Stadium. And they just keep coming out in droves. 
breaking pitch slapped toward first. Dill to the pitcher cover. And that's the inning. Mississippi State has a double, but strands the runner at second. And we'll go to the bottom of the seventh in a three-run game. You know, I never thought it could happen to us. Jim there will only be one with that championship trophy in their hand. The last two years, it has been LSU. Will there be a new one, or will they join USC as the only team to win three in a row out here in Omaha? Uh, after that display they put on today, they got a pretty good shot to defend that title. If it was home run derby, which it was this afternoon, they're going to win. Casey Smith leads it off in the Gator seventh. Down to their last three at bats against Hank Toms. Smith 0 for 2 with a walk. Followed by Catalanote and Nicholson. One and two. Kept it away, 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 and got him to chase that slider away. Right here, he sets the slider up because he's been off the plate. See that dropping down? That's a little curveball dropping down away from him. When you continue to go outside, it looks a little bit more enticing. Slings a fastball in there. He's done a nice job of keeping the hitters off balance. And most hitters don't get to look at a ball that breaks from 12 to 6 the way that one does. Most guys are more three-quarter, and the ball sweeps across a little bit. That one has some side motion, but it really drops. And what, what happens is after you see a, a guy throwing a curveball like that, you go up there saying, I don't want to get an account where he's able to throw that. You start swinging at everything. Everything else, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> one out in the floor to seven. 0-2 to Catalanote. Takes one downstairs. There it was right there. Junior college transfer from Glendale in Arizona. Called strike three. Backdoor breaking ball. Struck out the first two he has faced here in the seventh inning. Right here, we get a look at that hook again. Now, that's not the one that he was throwing earlier. He's, he's mixing it up. He's throwing two different type of curveballs. That's why I've had such a hard time picking that up. Right there, that's one that's not breaking nearly as sharp, but he's able to drop it on the back side. Nicholson stands in with nobody on and two gone in the Gators' seventh inning. Fouls a fastball straight back. And that's how you eliminate that curveball right there you jump on that first pitch fastball but what that does is double-edged sword you're down three you need some base runners and all of a sudden you're hacking at the first pitch if you miss it now you're in trouble you've allowed him to be in a position to throw that pitch to you Nicholson is one of those guys who's going to be first in line at the laundry machine at the first sign of an opportunity he's going to hit the dirt whether it's on base going for a ball you name it he's going to get some of that stuff on him immediately how you know he's a ball player. Outside corner called strike. I remember when I started playing in Seattle and they had AstroTurf and I, I'd come in <laughs> after the game and there'd be no dirt. I felt like I never played a game. Has his average up to 366, one for two officially on the night. Along with a sacrifice fly for an RBI. Takes that one low, two and two. Andy Lopez says, I hope he hits a home run in the College World Series because you've never seen a guy sprint on a home run trot. I think he's coming with that hook. He went to the rosin bag, got the grip, snapped it off. Just missed three and two. Little things you can pick up. He went to that rosin bag, hasn't, hasn't gone to the rosin bag, and did a little deep wipe like he was wiping his hands off. He just dried it up so he could get that good grip, came back and dropped one. Payoff to Nicholson. Fastball smoked in the right field for a base hit. Nicholson has 
singled his last two trips, and he's hit the ball all hard. Let's go to Dave Ryan. Dave. Well, Mike, thanks a lot. We talked about Derek Nicholson overcoming dyslexia, and we're joined by Ann Hughes. He's the academic advisor for the Florida baseball team, and it had to be so frustrating for Derek throughout his entire academic career before he finally found out he had a problem. I think that that frustration came out real early in his career at Florida. He was working as hard as he possibly could, and nothing was happening. And we finally sat down one day and talked, and I said, Derek, have you ever had a test for learning disabilities? And he said no. And I was really surprised. And so we started moving on that, and we tried to uh, figure out exactly what test we should give, and it all worked out in the end. And we understand he's doing quite well. He's on track to get that degree and a master's after that. His improvement has, has been quite marked. Derek has, is someone who takes advantage of every opportunity. He goes to school like to play baseball. And I think the most, the thing that I love about him the most is that I've never had to tell him anything twice. He just does what he's supposed to do, and he's really taken advantage of the opportunity. And thanks so much. Thank you. Guys, back up there. All right, thank you very much, Dave. And that's a wonderful story, what the uh, athletic support system at the University of Florida has been able to do for Derek Nicholson, and then what he's been able to do on his own after he got the help that he needed. It's just great. Exactly right. That's, that's part of being the student athlete. A lot of athletes do not take advantage of the opportunity of an education, all the things that are brought to you. You get a chance to go get that degree. People help you out. You've got to take advantage of that. 3-0 Ross taking all the way. He has homered earlier. If you hadn't heard our earlier report from Dave, uh, uh, Nicholson was diagnosed with dyslexia, but only after he was a junior at the University of Florida after he had transferred to Andy Lopez's program. And some kids just need a chance, and he's already proven what he can do with an opportunity. Ross with an opportunity here, sitting on a fastball at 3-1, fouls one off. And, and he's going to be the first guy out there to get dirty. That's just a, <laughs> an example. You know, uh, Andy Lopez was talking about, you look at this guy, and you think, uh-uh, I don't want to get near him. But he said he's got the greatest heart, and that's what separates him from so many other kids. Ross represents the tying run here in the bottom of the seventh. The Gators down three. Ball four. Two runners on with two out for Jason Dill, who homered his first time up. Well, Nicholson had that big at bat right there. He, he laid off a three, a two-two breaking ball, went to three-two, got the base hit, and has forced him there as he walks Ross now into a situation where Dills comes to the plate with an opportunity to get a bop and tie this thing. First team freshman All-American selected by Collegiate Baseball and the only true freshman for the Gators who is a position player. Strike call from Hank Toms. Well, he's got Polk now warming. He really handles himself well in the batter's box. You can just tell he just looks like a hitter. Mm. Swung over the top of a breaking ball. 0-2 in a big hole now. Nice stroke. The big kid. 6 one, one 95, pretty well put together. Mm. High fastball. With his home run in the second inning, he has 16 on the year. That's the best the Florida freshman has ever done. He would love to have number 17 right here. Now, when you got this spread out stance right here and you got a breaking ball pitcher, this is going to give you the best chance to hit him because you're not going to have much movement. Fanned at one and struck him out. Big strikeout for Hank Toms with two men on. Tried to do everything he could. Couldn't catch up to it. Toms gets out of a jam. We've completed seven, and Mississippi State is hanging on to that lead. To go to the eighth inning, the Bulldogs have had 17 base runners tonight. Brian with his ninth home run, a big one, a three-run homer. The Gators were only two out of 13 with runners in scoring position, and Brad Wilkerson, the All-American, with his shortest starting stint and the most earned runs of his career given up tonight, nine and three and two-thirds. But as we told you before, he did not become an All-American for his pitching skills, but more so for his hitting skills, and that's what's going to make him a living 
down the road. And Matt McClendon is the new pitcher, a sophomore from Orlando. 6'6", 225. A sophomore with a 9-4 and four record. Normally a starter. He's only made two relief appearances all year. And he's greeted with a shot to dead center. But right at Catalanote, who makes the catch. Freeman stepping up there, hacking right away. He told me before the game, he said, don't think I'm going to be sitting up there taking pitches. I am a swinger. It's a nice stroke. Sometimes you just don't find the hole. High fastball, and Richard Lee went after it, lost the bat. Yeah, you, know, you have that the rubber on those knobs, and sometimes guys will strip that down and use, just use a tape around it and put pine tar on it. Here he goes to the pine tar rag. Start getting a little wet, slippery night. We look back at this ball that Freeman hammered to center field. A little pine tar back on the on the bat. And, so he's got the tape and the pine tar. Tough combination to hang on to that bat with. It's like a golf club. You want a nice grip on it, but uh, you don't want to choke it to death. 0-2. Oh! And, and McClendon has come out of the bullpen throwing strikes. This, this young man right here has got great mechanics. It just looks like he's... 6'6 six, six frame, he gets it in a great position to go ahead and just let it go. He's going to do nothing but grow into it. Average to strike out per inning, just missed low with that one. It's two and two. We're in the Mississippi State eight, nobody on, one out. The Bulldogs, who have beaten the Florida Gators once since 1991, have a three run lead called strike three on Lee. Ow. That ball was pop. Get the mechanics here. He sets it up, and I mean, he lets this thing go and paints it right on the knees. Everything coming at you. Perfect follow through. Beautiful pitch. It'll bring up Brooks Bryan, who has two hits tonight, including a home run, and spins out of the way of an inside fastball. I don't know about you, Mike, but he's been pretty impressive the little bit we've seen him pitch. He made two uh, relief appearances in the regional. He got a win and a save to help get them in the College World Series. You want to go with a guy who's uh, got it going down the stretch. And there's some heat on that fastball. The 1-1 one, one to Brian outside, 2-1. McClendon trying to keep him close in the eighth. And all those Bulldog fans are having a great time, and boy, going darts. Brian has had to spin out of there a couple of times. They keep trying to get back inside on Brian. Now he's hit the home run to left field. He had a base hit to left center off the left-handed pitcher. Fastball low, and he lost him. So Brian walks with two out, and that'll leave it up to Travis Chapman. Look back at the sequence here. Trying to get inside. There's a fastball in, got him spinning. Went ahead. That ball ended up over the plate a little bit more. Went out. Now they want to come back in. That's where you want to get this guy out. Now they've all faced each other before, so they got an idea in the scouting report how they want to pitch him. Fastball to Chapman, outside corner at the knees. Chapman has walked twice tonight, officially 0 for 2. Came in hitting 339. He has been a clutch hitter for the ball club, especially late in the season. They would love to have a pad beyond that three runs. Coaches always tell you five is wonderful because the grand slam still leaves you one ahead. Mm -hmm. You can tell by the look on his face right there. He's not real thrilled with just having three. He wants a little bit more. Pat McMahon knows he's faced the Gators enough as an associate head coach under Ron Polk and now as the head coach. Spent a lot of time in Jacksonville, Florida. Bishop Kenny High School there. The 1-1 to Chapman. Fastball wrapped towards short. 
Easy force at second. And Mississippi State is gone in the eighth. A three-run Bulldog seven score. Florida will start it off with the number nine man in the order of time, Martin. Toms has been very effective out of the bullpen. Martin won for three tonight. Father, a longtime trainer for the Minnesota, the Minnesota Twins. Dad's name, Dick Martin. This is the time of the game where he's got to be taking this 2-0 pitch right here, just trying to get on base. He does, and it's a called strike. Get something going, get Martin on, go back to the top and see what happens. Yeah, number nine hitters better not be sw swinging the 2 0 pitches down three runs. And the pitcher shouldn't be walking at number nine. That's hitter, right. With a three run lead. Here's the 3 1 from Toms to Ty Martin inside, and he lost him a leadoff walk. And now you get to go back to the top of the order. Sometimes if you're a coach or a manager and you draw it up, you say, well, what's the worst thing that could happen? Well, we walk the number nine guy and get back to the top of the order, and sure enough, and Tom knows it too. Oh, always that defining moment. Ellis, the leadoff man, has had no luck with a bat in his hand tonight. Well, Ellis understanding the game also that even if he hits a two-run home run, you're still down one. He went up there and took the first pitch. But look at those numbers right there. Top five in the order, hitting a crisp 166 tonight off Mississippi State pitching. Oh, inside and it hit him. Two runners aboard, a walk and a hit batsman. This is not how you want to start the bottom of the eighth when you're up three. Have a little conversation about that. Here's a break ball, a little fastball or something. Just go ahead and go ahead and let it hit me. He was doing everything he could to lean into yes, it. In the was. end, he didn't have to. Hit him in the right spot, too. If you want to get hit, that's where <laughs> you want to get hit. A little extra padding. Yeah, a little bit. Well, Ellis had been 0 for 4, so he found a good way to get on. And they'll go to the bullpen after Tom starts very shakily here in the eighth with a walk and a hit batsman. And the new pitcher will be Kevin Donovan. We'll check out his numbers when we come back to Omaha. To demonstrate the unique construction in the eighth after pitching rather well, but he starts the eighth inning with a walk and a hit batter. And he'll give way to Kevin Donovan, the left-hander from South Haven, Mississippi. A sophomore who has made 15 relief appearances this year, an earned run average of shade under five, and a two and one record. Well, he's a specialist pitcher, and they're bringing him in, in this situation, let him get a little accustomed to uh, pitching, first of all, to Siegel, who I think would probably be bunning if he does in this situation. You got Mississippi State likes to play the conservative game. You're not going to see a will play, you're not going to see them possibly even trying to cut off that front runner. They want to get an out and get to the next hitter. That old philosophy, if they're going to give you an out, take it. You see the whole infield drawn in. Third base is already up, expecting a bunt. Siegel's going to square around early and show it. Siegel and Wilkerson, the two three men in the order, both left-handers. So a nice spot for Donovan. And you see the third baseman up and the shortstop creeping in behind him. They're not going anywhere. They're expecting that bunt. Ah! Here's the pitch. Now what happens? What happens on a natural rotation? The third baseman's gonna, he's already talked to the pitcher. He's gonna expect the ball in this area. He'll come get it. If not, then he'll drop back, which he did and let the pitcher go ahead and get it. The shortstop's going to fake like he's going this way, but he's not going anywhere. He's going to stay right in this area. His responsibility is second base. See the third That's base fade back. Yeah, he's retreating as soon as the ball's mm -hmm. thrown. So they've already told the pitcher, okay, you got the ball right here. If he bunts it hard, the third baseman takes it and throws the ball to first base. If not, 
Then he'll back off, let the pitcher get it, and go ahead and cover third base. And Siegel is going to try to get it right down the line to make it tough for the pitcher to field it. And that's the perfect bunt. And they'll let it roll foul. Oh, and he got a bad hop. Yes, he did. It looked like it hit the infield cut out of the grass and kicked left. Mm -hmm. And now he's in a one and two hole. But that's the perfect situation. As a hitter, you want to bunt this ball to third base. Now look at the bunt right here. Perfect. He set his angle. You don't want to try for a base hit. You just want to get that sacrifice down and you see it kicked out. If it sits down on this soft grass, that's going to be a base hit because that's an area that nobody's going to throw you out in. But when you got two, got a strike on you already and you're sacrificing, use the bigger part of the, the infield to go ahead and make sure you get that ball down. I'm going to do it with two strikes. Siegel squares, takes the pitch just outside, two and two. Now, I used to like to bunt with two strikes because really? it makes you concentrate that much more. All you got to do is put the ball down. You can't think about where I want to place it, all the different things that come through your head up there. You just think about, I got to bunt a strike and get it down. A lot of pressure on a hitter. Siegel got it down, hit it hard. They had a play at third. They don't take it. They get the shore out at first. But that's what happens when you bunt with two strikes. Even the defense becomes cautious. They're like, we just want to get it out. You put the pressure actually back on them. You think the pressure's on the bunter, but it's actually back on the defense. And the first, third baseman decides he's going to go ahead. He doesn't know what to do. Will I go get it? Will I go back? The runners have already taken off. He may elect to get the out, and that's the way Mississippi State plays it anyway, so they got the cautious out. Donovan played it smart. He saw the third baseman Chapman was off the bag, didn't hesitate, wheeled and fired, and here is Wilkerson, the big guy representing the tying run, and two runners in scoring position down three here in the eighth. And here's the situation where Smith is going to see a right-hander next at bat. Now, if Wilkerson walks, gets a base hit or whatever, we talked about Smith goes, Florida goes, well, this is the inning. We'll get a chance to see that play out. Breaking ball low. One and one to Brad Wilkerson. 23 home runs, 69 RBIs coming into the ball game. Leading the team in both categories. Donovan sets one and one. Outside. Nice block that time by Patton. That time he finally got a ball that bounced the proper way. He's been getting a lot of balls in the dirt, and they, they kicked the opposite direction on him. Right here, he gets down there, and that ball kicked up into his chest protector. The other ones have been staying down and skipping on him. That's why he's able to keep that one in front of him. And that's a big, crucial yes, play it right is. there. Two and one to Wilkerson. Fastball way outside, three and one. Casey Smith would be next. Three, one. Walked him. They're loaded for Smith. And right here we're gonna see we're gonna see that change and it's gonna come down to Casey Smith not gonna stay with Donovan Scott Polk in the bullpen the lefty faces the two and three men the left handers in the order and he is gone Scott Polk the right hander will come on to face Casey Smith we'll check him out in just a moment base well, his father's right here. Thanks for joining us very much. It's got to be very, very exciting for you, Frank, to, to be able to come out and, and, and uh, see your son play. Oh, it's, it's great. I listen to all of his games over the audio net, radio, and I watched a few games on uh, cable TV early in the season. But to sit here and see a, an, an SEC opponent, uh, I've never seen a conference game, and uh, this, is, this is really exciting. I love it. Well, this, we're joined by the father of the Minnesota Twins, uh, longtime trainer Dick Martin, 27 years with the Minnesota Twins. Father Ty Martin is on third base. You, you got one day off to come see your son play. Got to drive back to Minnesota for the game tomorrow. Pretty crazy schedule for you. Yeah, it's crazy. Thanks, thanks to the generosity of our general manager Terry Ryan and our great uh, manager Tom Kelly. They said go. 
we'll see him play. So I'm here. Thanks a lot, Jake. Guys, let's see if Ty Martin can score back upstairs. All right, thanks, Dave. Special things happen at the College World Series. Even uh, the Major League guys find a big heart every now and then. Fastball is high from Scott Polk, who had a couple of nice appearances in the regional, had a pair of saves, allowed only two hits in three relief appearances. Does not have a decision on the year. This is his 21st trip to the mound. Wild on the first two. There's no place to put Casey Smith. This is a situation that he really relishes. He was looking forward to the opportunity to be able to hit here. And he also said, I like it because the flags are blowing out. And if you look the center field right now, the flags are blowing and he's got a 2-0 count. Polk has got to come into him. And it's smoked to center field right at Bryan. He'll make the catch. And one run will score. It's a sacrifice fly and an RBI for Casey Smith. But he wanted a lot more. Hit it on the nose. When he hit it on the nose. He just didn't get it up. But that ball, you can't ask for better. It's a fastball right where he's looking at. And he out over, just ran on him just a little bit at the end. That might be why he missed it. But he hit it nice and solid. Wasn't able to lift it. Got the RBI, though. The Gators close within two. It's 10-8 here in the bottom of the eighth. Catalanote has a double tonight. He represents the go-ahead run. Check swing. It's a called strike. 28 come from behind wins for the Florida Gators. They gave up 10 runs in the first four innings and they have been scrapping back ever since. Hulk with a breaking ball inside. Good stop by Patton. Hulk's best pitch is his breaking ball. He's going to throw some breaking pitches. And now you'll get an opportunity with that runner off of third base now to see if he's going to go ahead and use that breaking pitch a little bit more. In the dirt, blocked, it gets away, and the runners will advance. Patton didn't have much of a chance on that one. Well, Patton's getting one thing, and he's definitely getting a workout. If he doesn't know how to block a ball but going into the game, he'll definitely know by the time he leaves. This is just a, a tough pitch. He's got the object that might hit the hitter. This ball, look at how close this tends to hit. It looked like it hit the hitter. It bounces and shoots the other way. Did a nice job just blocking that ball. What he hasn't been able to do is get the knees down. The glove comes down, but the rest of the body hasn't been. Chop towards second. 4-3 put out, and they're out of the inning. Mississippi State hanging on by its fingernails, and Scott Polk comes out of the bullpen to get the big outs. Florida going to the ninth in the College World Series. 10-8 Bulldogs. One more inning to go from Omaha and following our game here on ESPN2. Stay tuned for live MLS action. The Chicago Fire against the L.A. Galaxy. Major League Soccer action when we're done here in Omaha. Matt McClendon will face the bottom third of Mississippi State's order here in the ninth. Patton, Dabs, and Lauterhaas. Florida State's pitching has been just incredible since the fourth inning. London looks like he has a tremendous future. He's got great size. 6'6. Six, six, good mechanics. So you, you automatically see you got something to work with, and he's just going to get stronger and stronger. Smack nearly dehorned the first base coach in foul territory. The other, Stay alert, boy. You better wake up down there. The other thing is he's got an idea of what he's trying to do with the strike zone, but whew, this ball smoked right here. <laughs> it's great how you can laugh when it misses, you know? Yeah. I hit somebody, it is an ugly sound. No. And baseball players have the nastiest sense of humor anyway. <laughs> uh-huh. 
Florida bullpen the last four innings has not allowed a run, giving up only one hit and recorded five strikeouts. Well, it looked like they just decided, you know what, we're going to forget about the home runs, forget about this ballpark, and we are going to go after guys. And that is the way the last two guys have pitched. It's a straightaway center and deep. Canelanote can't outrun it right over the 408 side for a home run, Barry Patton. I guess Patton decided to remind them that, no, the home run is still alive in this ballpark. Another homer to dead center. And in spite of all the comebacks that Florida has had this year, they are 0-13 when trailing after 8. And Mississippi State is a remarkable 34-1, leading after 7. And now they lead by one more, courtesy of Barry Patton. And he just got extension on that ball. That's all That's all he did was extend, jumped on the fastball. McClendon supplied most of that power. 11-8, Mississippi State. Sometimes they go out a lot faster than they come in. Dabbs, who came on in the fourth as a pinch hitter for John Knott. We've now had a College World Record, or College World Series record, 15 homers in today's doubleheader. <laughs> wow. I'm going to have to get a new shipment of baseball. Well, we, we talked a little bit earlier, Mike, we ran out of time, really, that the athletes are so much bigger and stronger now, and swinging that aluminum bat, I picked up a bat the other day, it looked like a Bam Bam Club, I should have been on the <laughs> Flintstones, this, this thing had the biggest bat head and hitting surface, I don't know how they can miss a ball. And it was still so light that the bat speed is faster than a wood bat, and he lost him. After the home run, Dab draws the wall. And you've seen some nasty, uh, the reason they went to wood bats in professional ball anyway, uh, stayed with wood bats in professional ball when you would never see aluminum bats is the distance between home plate and the pitcher's mound, 60 feet, 6 inches, is so close. The reaction time, they felt like with a professional hitter, a pitcher might get hurt. But these kids now, they hit the ball harder than the pros do. Yeah, they do. And guys are getting hurt all the time. And not only pitchers, but first and third basemen are getting hurt because the ball is getting there so fast. Lauterhaas looking to sacrifice against McClendon and get Dabs into scoring position. Siegel just all the way in as they go to a pitching change here, or uh, actually just a little conversation it looks like. Now there's no doubt in Siegel's mind at third baseman that they are bunning. Throw over to first. A lot of times when you see a throw over to first, you want to see what that hitter is going to do if he's tipping a bunt or not, because if you're going to bunt, you got to square around a little bit earlier and you get a chance to look at it. Well, if he doesn't bunt, there's no place for Siegel to hide. Popped up in the air, foul. And they're crashing so hard, I got a 3-1 lead. They work on that slap bunt all the time, that little butcher boy play. I would go ahead and try it. You got three runs to work with, no outs. They want to come crashing in that, that hard. This young man handles the bat really well. Go ahead and let him do it. Already has two hits tonight. Single and a double out of the nine hole. He ain't but Boy, and Siegel's knees at third lock <laughs> up a little bit when you're that close because your reaction time is gone if he hits it down there. He does that to me. I got respect for you. I'm not even coming in. But he's still creeping. Good choice. <laughs> he's still creeping. Here he comes. Two and one. Squared the bunt, pulled the bat back. And it's three and one to Chris Waterhouse. I might see him move the runner here, a little hit and run action. This wouldn't be a bad time to go ahead and do it. McClendon has been around the plate enough to go ahead and put a little hit and run play on. Strike in there. Lauterhaus does handle the bat pretty well. Well, 3 2. We'll see if they start the runners. The runner, I should say. Here's 
the payoff pitch laced in the left field for a base hit. Three hits on the night for Lauterhaus. Gabs stops at second. Waterhouse got a fastball inside and just turned on it. Interesting to see what they decide to do here. If they're going to bunt or allow your leadoff hitter to swing the bat. Now, they're not, they usually, they said they usually do not want this guy to bunt. They want him to swing the bat. Their first 400 hitter since Will Clark. Showing no sign of bunting and takes a curveball for called strike one. Weiss has one hit tonight, his first time up to lead off the ball game. Oh, and two as McClendon pours a fastball in there. No signs of letting up, that's for sure. Breaking ball on 0-2, could be two. Bobbled by the shortstop, still gets one back to first. Not in time. Ellis bobbled the ball, a tailor-made double play, but the bobble cost him. Well, this ball, once again, we saw it earlier when the first baseman missed the ball. This one jumps up and just bites him at the end. Now, I thought as he bobbled that ball, he might have been close enough to just go ahead and take it himself. But look at this, bounced up at the last second. You're not gonna get two now. They try to make the turn, but getting down the line, not going to get him. So the inning stays alive. Runners at first and third with two out for Rusty Toms. Check it one out. Fastball on the corner. He is great. Fastball slapped. Foul. Tom's just spoiling that one. Brad Freeman waiting for his turn in the on-deck circle. And that young man's got a souvenir. That cute little boy's going to remember this night for a long time. 0-2 to Tom's. Fastball. And it hit the end of the bat. Well, that's the part he wasn't holding on to. He's the one guy that chokes up in the lineup. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no meat, just aluminum. Right here, hits the knob. Look at this. Watch this all the way. Tries to pull out of there. Boom. And you got to start shaking your hand when that happens, and sometimes they give you the base. Another 0-2 pitch to Toms. Another fastball inside. Pissed at him. They'll go to second. Now they come home trying to get the runner and do it. Yeah. Well, I think McClendon really got lucky. If that's a planned play, they have more guts than anybody in organized baseball. McClendon looked at second. I think he realized there was no way he was going to get the double play and then threw home and got the runner. Now what, what you're taught to do, as soon as you field the ball, you got to pick up that runner, give him a little look. Now he looks. And maybe it didn't register. He didn't even look. I won't even give him credit for that. He just kind of spun around and just said, oh, I didn't look. <laughs> it That's probably what it was. He realized he didn't look and said, I better turn around and look. Now watch him right here. He fills the ball, spins around. The, the runner is already down the line. If he'd have picked it up and looked right at him, all he'd do is run over and touch him in the first place. <laughs> but you're right. Toms is on on a fielder's choice. Two out runners at first and second. Breaking ball hangs inside to Freeman. One for five tonight. He's seen his average drop from 362 to 359. McClendon one out from getting out of this jam. High foul ball is drifting back into the seats behind the plate. That was a big play, Mike, because that puts it at four and a grand slam ties a ball game instead of you losing. But right here, watch the runner now. The ball's going to be hit, and the runner will end up in this area right here. Now, if he's right here, and he stops, if he feels it and looks right at him, 
he would have had him. All you got to do is turn, look at him immediately. You freeze the runner. If you take, make the read, if he's closer to third base, you throw the ball to second, get the force. If not, you run at him. And by making the mental mistake, he actually gets the lead runner. It's a better play. <laughs> Sometimes this game works out very funny. Oh, one, one hit him. And they're loaded. Freeman got it square in the back. Right there, just drilling Freeman in the back. Once again, these guys are getting hit in the right spot, though. <laughs> if you're going to get hit, of course, you'd prefer to get hit by a nice, slow curveball. Bases loaded, called strike outside corner at the knee to Richard Lee. Now, what I mean by a one-lane pitcher, Mike, he's been able to throw the outside fastball to the right-hander and the inside pitch to the left-hander, which would be the same lane, but he's not able to do the opposite way. Every time he tries to come into a right-hander, he's either hit him or they foul it off their bat. And a left-hander, he hasn't been able to get the ball out there. Freeman has been hit by a pitch now 37 times in his Mississippi State career. He's been anxious to take one for the ball club, and he's done it 37 times. Wow. He's a ball player, man. He just, he just <laughs> loves to come out and play. And he's the leader of this team. He'll be the first one that everybody says, oh, you got to meet Freeman. I go down there and I'm shaking hands with all these guys. Oh, you got to meet Freeman. You want to talk to him? You got to meet Freeman. They love him. He's the president of the HBP plan, hit by a pitch. <laughs> Richard Lee facing a one and two count. Bases loaded. McClendon struggling to get out of the ninth. Two and two. Four-year starter, a quiet leader on this ball club. Leads him in home runs and RBIs has erased most of Will Clark's and Rafael Palmero's hitting records. Oh! Just missed with a fastball. Now it's three and two. And there's that inside pitch, the other lane. He's not able to put that ball in the inside half. He almost hit him with the pitch right there, too. The runners will be going. Two out, full count on Richard Lee. McClendon right down the middle and drill the center field. That'll get two runs home. And Mississippi State extends its lead to 13-8. Boy, he had to go back outside to throw that strike. When you know a pitcher can't get a ball over the plate at a certain location, you don't have to worry about that location anymore. So he's looking outside, he gets a pitch outside and does a beautiful piece of hitting that stays with it and drives it in the right center field gap. See the reaction from their bench. Richard Lee sitting on the fastball, got it and drilled it. And that is just a major at bat because that gives him a five run lead and a grand slam doesn't tie you. Here's Brooks Bryant. Runners at the corners with two out. Strike one. Brian has a home run, a single, and a walk in four official plate appearances tonight. Tries to bunt it down the third baseline. Safe! And another run scores! Wow. Brooks Bryan just trying to get that insurance run. He bunted it very hard. Siegel was in quickly, but Brian was off and running as soon as that ball touched the bat. Well, it's all, all a matter of placement. See how he sets the ball down the line. Now, the third baseman's got to go to the line, get the ball, make the throw back across the body, and that's why he was able to beat that ball out. It's not necessarily where you place it as, as much as if he'd have bunted it towards first base and allowed him to be able to get the ball in the angle on the way, he probably would have got thrown out. But he put it towards the line, making him go to the line and come back and throw it across. Plus, the element of surprise was incredible. Oh, yeah. The lead grows to six. 14 to eight here in the ninth, and McClendon really muscled up on that last one at 92. Facing the ninth man in the order, Travis Chapman, the third time the Bulldogs have batted around tonight against Gator pitching. Hit to third. Siegel comes up, will get the force in front of him. 
the inning is over, but the damage has been done. Mississippi State with insurance runs in the ninth, and they lead 14-8. Mississippi State has increased its lead here in the ninth inning. Now up by six over the top-seeded Florida Gators. And a new pitcher on this very deep Mississippi State staff, Chris Reinecke, a right-hander from Long Beach, Mississippi. Six and six on the year. His 19th appearance and an earned run average of nearly seven. And it's his job to come on and hold him here in the ninth inning. And Matt Peoples will come in defensively at second base. Uh, I'm almost convinced, Mike, you throw that ERA out in the college game. You can throw strikes, you can pitch for me. Mississippi State coming into tonight's game had beaten the Florida Gators one time in 17 tries since 1991. They had really had a hex over this ball club. They had two one-run games and a blowout this year in Gainesville. And right now, they're up by six. Nicholson will lead it off for Florida. They need base runners against Reinecke. High fastball. Funny thing is a lot of these Mississippi State kids don't even remember playing against them this year. But in 91, they were playing junior high school. You can, they That's don't right. care about that. Good stats for us, though, huh? Yeah, they are. Nicholson ahead 2-0. and oh. He singled his last two trips and is two for four tonight. Takes a big cut on the 2-0 pitch and misses it. Well, the one thing that has kept Florida alive is they never say die all year long. They've made mistakes. They knew they kicked the ball around. They did it again tonight. They've never quit. This kid's a clutch hitter. Had the game-winning hit against Illinois in the championship game in the regional and extra innings. Takes a pitch high, three and one. He'll do anything to get on base now, and we'll have the bottom third of the order coming up. Those guys need to keep it alive. Those are the guys who have hit tonight. They really have. And big swing and a miss, three and two. And you, you wouldn't expect that from the bottom part of your order, but that's that's a compliment to their lineup. That the bottom part of their order has been able to swing like that. Mike, I'm telling you, Mississippi State has got some depth in their pitching. They okay, talked about everyone. it. Smoked into left field, a base hit. The third straight single for Nicholson. That is a clutch at bat for that young man. You never die. This is beautiful, though. He gets a fastball away and stays with it nice. That's just a pretty stroke. The ball away, a lot of times, if you're able to just extend your hands and, and let the, the ball do the work, you're able to get that base hit, and that's what he did right there. Even with all those comebacks, they are 0-13, trying to make a comeback in the ninth. But they have come back earlier so many times. This was chopped toward the hole and through. A base hit for David Ross, who has three tonight. Two singles and a homer. And you have to know the Gators just believe so much in their offense. They're not going to quit. Now, one thing that you're, you're doing on defense right here, particularly in the infield, you're up six runs, so you want to play back. You're not playing for a double play. You want to be able to cut the ball off. Right there, that last dribbler that went through, they were playing at a depth that really was not double play. They were at double play depth where they should be back. Now, they're moving up again, but they need to be actually back on the grass almost. Just cut it off and get one. Play for one out. Chuck Hazard, the pinch hitter for Jason Dill. Breaking ball is in there to Hazard. He's the senior out of Dallas, Texas. Had a couple of hits in the regional and an RBI. outside one and one more action in the Mississippi Bay, uh, Mississippi State bullpen 
Freed and Van Johnson, number 23, who has been their closer, the side armor. Ty Martin, the number nine hitter, would be next, and then back to the top of the order. What they're trying to do is get down to Wilkerson and Casey Smith, the big guys, to give them a chance. One and two. Well, he takes a nice hack right here. He just digging in, going ahead and letting it go. Hasn't had a lot of bats lately, so he's a little bit late on that swing. First one to loosen up a little bit. Well, he got rid of the adhesions on that one. <laughs> Chop towards short. Freeman will get the force at second to throw on the first, and they hold it. Nice decision by Lauterhaas. The Gators now two and two of 15 with runners in scoring position. Yeah, you just want to get one out. That's all you're trying to do now. He's going to come in and try to take you out, but just get one. They got, in college baseball, you have to slide straight to the base. You can't go after the defender, and that's why you see all these guys going straight into the base. Not that they're blind and can't see the, the second baseman <laughs> or the shortstop. The rules are you have to go straight into that's the right. base. Ty Martin, the number nine hitter. One for three tonight and a walk. Takes a fastball low. Reinecke in his first inning of relief in this game. Fouled out of play. This is only Reinecke's third relief appearance of the year, but in the College World Series, uh, it's Johnny Holstaff in the bullpen. Everybody's going to get a shot if you need it. <laughs> Johnny Holstaff, and they keep bringing everybody to it. They, they got another left-hander up. I mean, they got so many guys, I think everybody's pitching. The runner goes, and they're not going to bother to throw through. He is meaningless at this point. I was waiting for him to take off because the first baseman was just letting him go. Now on defense, you back up. You play for one out. Go ahead, just swing the bat. And in the outfield, you play as deep as you can. You want to cut off anything in the gap. Just don't give them doubles. You still have a six-run lead, a 2-1 count to Martin. Low, 3-1. And they're thinking well in advance, uh, getting that left-hander up in the pen. They're looking towards Wilkerson coming back up there again. And Siegel. And Siegel. They brought in a lefty the last time to face the two three men. Fastball hit towards center field. It's a base hit. It's going to get one run home. will hold the other runner at third, playing it safe. Looked like they could have easily scored. Yeah, I thought he might send him home. He got a pretty good jump on that, but... You know, being down like they are, you do have to hold the runner up. I'm sitting up here waving him home up here in the booth, <laughs> but you got to hold him up. Runners at first and third, one out. It's now a five-run game. Back to Mark Ellis, whose only success tonight has been when he was hit by a pitch the last time up in the eighth. Takes a fastball low. Siegel, Wilkerson, and Smith, the next three hitters in the order, if they can keep it alive, and we can have some real excitement here in the bottom of the ninth. Hit down the right field line is twisting back into the stands. Well, these games are never over. Wilkerson hoping for a chance to hit. He's got two guys in front of him. If he gets up, the game's going to be on the line. No, not with the aluminum bat and a little breeze blowing to right. Breaking ball hung high. It's a nice job by Patton to try to bring it down with his glove into the strike zone, but the home plate umpire wasn't having any of it. Yeah, he's, con he's had a good plate tonight. Home plate umpire has been very consistent. Two and one to Ellis. Three and one on a high fastball. And now Patton is going to go out to talk to Reinecke, who had walked 29 in 71 and two-thirds innings coming in, struck out 74. And I think Reinecke was still upset about the last call. Yeah, he thought he might have got a pitch, but well, when you're around the plate and the umpire's had a consistent zone, you got a pretty good idea where you put, need to put that ball. If you're not put it there, he's not going to call it. Ball four, they're loaded. 
Oh, my. If it wasn't interesting, it definitely is now. The base is loaded, one out, bottom of the ninth. Siegel will come up against Reinecke, and we may see another left-hander out of the pen. Mississippi State with that deep pitching staff, we may get to see all of them tonight. Yeah, and if they if they walk away with a W, then it's been a blessing because now everybody's pitched. That's right. And they're not nervous the next time they get in the game. But if you don't, then you go back to home to the to the hotel and you wonder what in the world we scored 14 and lost. Johnson, the right-hander, has been the closer. But he's the side armor. You, don't, you wouldn't expect him to come in with two left-handers coming up, especially Wilkerson. You don't think Wilkerson would like to see a side armor with the bases juiced? Definitely so. Get one right down that loop zone. Drive one out of here. They will stay with Reinecke to the left-hander, Matt Siegel. Siegel has one base hit, a double, back in the sixth. Outside, ball one. Wilkerson is on deck. Siegel gets a run home. Wilkerson would represent the tying run. Fakes the bunt to distract the pitcher, taking all the way, and it's 1-1. One, one. Fourteen to nine, and it's far from over, folks. High breaking ball. MLS soccer comes up right here as soon as we're done here in Omaha. Reineke's been pretty fortunate. He's hung some breaking balls, but he's hung them way out of the strike zone. Yeah, he's getting away with it. But if you keep flirting, on, you keep flirting with that strike zone pretty soon, he's putting himself in a position where he's got to throw a ball over the plate. And that's when you get hurt. Well, he's putting himself in a position. If he walks this man, then it's a four-run game. Wilkerson would come up with the bases loaded, sitting on a fastball down the heart. Three and one to Siegel. Strike call. Quality pitch there. Well, he's taken all the way, too. And you want to put the pressure on the pitcher. Now, this is a big, big pitch of the game right here because you don't want to get to Wilkerson with an opportunity to go ahead and tie this ball game. Here's the payoff pitch to Siegel. Walked it. Walked in a run. It's a four-run game. Wilkerson now represents the tying run. They have threatened to tie it up in the seventh, the eighth, and now the ninth. And here comes Van Johnson, the side-arming right-hander to face, in many people's mind, college baseball's player of the year, Brad Wilkerson, who is nine this year. They have dropped him down to a side-arm delivery. He is 3-0 with those nine saves and a 3.38 ERA. 32 strikeouts in 42 and two-thirds innings. And boy, if you're a left-hander, all you would ask for is a sidearm. But he is a sinker ball pitcher, and they're looking for that ground ball double play to get him out of this. Yeah, you just want to make sure he gets that ball up. When anytime you face a sinker baller, just go up there concentrating, get the ball up to me. And it's a beautiful pitch to hit. Wilkerson already has been in this situation himself. In 96, he had a grand slam game-winning homer against FSU to and then closed out the game and got a save. And on top of it, it was his birthday. <laughs> so he is used to heroics. And it looked like Patton was in some pain. And they have taken him out. Wow. And we'll have a new catcher. Ryan McGrath, a sophomore from Corinth, Mississippi. Well, 
Well, I don't know what happened to uh, Mr. Patton here. Maybe they just uh, tried to make a little change because of the sinker ball pitcher. That could be blocking balls and because he hasn't had the greatest success tonight. McGrath, the new catcher, the new pitcher is Van Johnson, and Brad Wilkerson waits at the plate, takes ball one. And, he, and that's not a good sign. That first pitch is up high. That's the last thing you want to do if you're a sinker ball pitcher, throw a high fastball. Strike called outside corner. Wilkerson with the bases loaded. Hitting 667 and three homers. Florida could not have asked for a better situation for a possible comeback in the ninth inning. They're down by four. They're all everything player up with the bases juiced. Two and one. Especially when you weren't expecting going into this inning after giving up four runs in the top of the inning to even be in the situation that they're in. Absolutely. Harold, that's a great point. They nearly gave it away in the ninth. May have, in fact. Mm -hmm. Wilkerson got one up. That looked like that ball was right in his wheelhouse. Well, it did, but he, he took some speed. He changed speeds on him, though. He got him out in front. He didn't read it real well. And that's the one thing the sinker baller can do is he throws a change up. He gives you that arm angle. It looks like a fastball. It's a tough pitch to read. But if he misses with it, it's a nice pitch to hit. Two and two, Van Johnson facing Brad Wilkerson, bottom of the ninth, a four-run lead for Mississippi State. Wilkerson with 23 home runs this year. Inside, full count. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, well. Hmm. There's not a dry forehead in either dugout. 3-2. Down the right field line, hooking foul. Oh, holy cow. Just got out in front. Oh, my goodness. Well, a couple of hearts skipped a beat in the Mississippi State dugout because that line drive was out of here in a hurry. He gets just out in front. Oh. Just Play. barely hooking it. He's waving it. We'll just let him tell you the picture. And Van Johnson can breathe again. Another payoff pitch. Oh. That looked like ball four. Wilkerson just went out after it and spoiled it. Here's the dugout. The Gators hoping. It was clearly foul. You can tell by the reactions of everybody. It was foul. From here, it looked like it might have hooked fair. Yeah. The third 3-2 pitch. Walked it. It's a three-run game. And you know that's not what Wilkerson wanted. He wanted to hit the baseball, but he's got to take the walk on that pitch. And you understand why they walked Wilkerson so many times this year. And even in this game, you've seen why. And now Casey Smith back to the situation that he loves so much again, hitting 500 with the bases loaded, eight for 16 with two grand slams. Smith represents the winning run. It's 14-11. Ball hung inside, one and oh. Lost in the drama, there is only one out. That's right. <laughs> An extra base hit could tie it. Smith, 11 homers, 62 RBIs coming into the game. This one's hit to deep center field, but on his horse is Brian. He'll make the catch. That'll get one run home, and it's 14 to 12, but also the second out. That's two in a row that he's hit hard to center field. Yes, yeah, he just missed that ball, and actually going off the bat, it looked like it was going to be in the gap. He had a nice swing at it, but didn't quite get it, and you can see his frustration. He wanted to leave the house.
Greg Catalanotti. The left-handed batter to face the side armor Van Johnson trying to save it for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. He is the ninth man to hit in the ninth inning. Big swing and fouled it back. Came out aggressive. Catalanotti also has more than 10 home runs, one of seven Gators to do it this year. He has a double to show for his night's work so far. Well, last time in this situation, they bounced the ball by him and ended up running the second and third. Chop, foul, 0 and 2. Johnson quickly gets ahead. And Calanoni had a chance to tie the ball game with a base hit when he was up the last time. Now they battle back again and put him in a situation where if he drives one in the gap, he might tie the ball game up. He ended the eighth. He certainly doesn't want to end the ninth. And everybody's on their feet. Here's the 0-2. High for a ball. If Mississippi State holds on, that means top-seeded Florida will fall into the loser's bracket, and they'll have to fight their way out of that. Van Johnson going for his 10th save, trying to save it for Ginter. Ball two. To give some credit to the home plate umpire. He has yes, been sir. consistent all night long. And that's all you want as a, as a pitcher and as a hitter. This ball sinking down a low off the plate, but he is right on it. Look at the positioning he's got right there. He is right on that pitch. Wade Ford awaits the 2 2 from Van Johnson with Catalanote at the plate. He has had a two-out bottom of the ninth home run that beat Mercer the opening weekend of the season. All these guys have been heroes. Chop and throw in the right field. One run will score. And it's a one-run game. Oh, my. Holy cow. Well, that, that's a situation right there where... You get that sinker baller and you're able to hook it. He hooked it right through that four hole. Got a little top spin, got it to bounce on through. Clutch hit. It's a one run game and now Johnson is gonna have to face the hottest hitter in this lineup, Nicholson. Now you see where the second baseman started at. He was expecting him to hit that ball the other way. He had doubled into the left field gap already earlier in the evening and top one to the second baseman playing him up the middle, and he was able to hook it just enough to get it into right field. Derek Nicholson has three straight base hits. Raised his average to 372. It is a one-run game. Low for a ball. Just what's interesting, Mike, is they are not holding that runner at first base. He could easily take second. It's a gift, and he would represent the go-ahead run. Got to go ahead and take it. Nicholson slaps it down to first. Richard Lee will step on the bag, and the game is over. Mississippi State, for only the second time since 1991, has beaten the University of Florida. And they beat them 14-13 to knock number one down into the loser's bracket. Van Johnson gets the save. Well, he definitely got a save, and he, he just got it by the skin of his teeth. The foul ball Wilkerson hit could have changed the whole fate of this direction this World Series is going in for Florida. The opening round now complete. Here are the brackets. Today's winners, LSU and now Mississippi State. They will meet on Monday afternoon. USC and top-seeded Florida are just one loss away from going home. It's a doubleheader tomorrow. Arizona State and Miami in the afternoon on ESPN. The night game, Florida State and Long Beach State on ESPN, too. Coming up next, Major League Soccer, the Chicago Fire and the LA Galaxy. For Harold Reynolds, Dave Ryan, and our entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. <laughs>